Wisconsin, the New England Patriots against the Green Bay Packers. The New England Patriots, a power-laden football team featuring the quarterbacking of Steve Grogan and the consistently brilliant play of the practically all-world tight end, Russ Francis, number 81. But there are so many more in the New England attack. For instance, there is number 86, Stanley Morgan, the speedy wide receiver. For the pack struggling to get back, there is the extension of Bart Starr, number 17, David Whitehurst, out of Furman, and Jim Lofton, the Stanfordite, who is such a brilliant young receiver. And then the punishing Green Bay ground game with 34, Turdell Middleton. So, it's Monday Night Football in Green Bay, the pack against the Patriots. ABC's Monday Night Football is brought to you by Buick, where you'll find very good thinking in everything from Riviera and the mid-sized Century and Regal to the amazing front-wheel drive Skylark and Lanier Business Products, creators of the no-problem electronic typewriter, the typewriter that does more than just type. Frank Gifford, along with Howard Cosell and Don Meredith, a jam-packed Lambeau Field, Green Bay, Wisconsin, the kickoff between the New England Patriots and the Green Bay Packers moments away, and we'll be returning right after this. RCA wants you to see the right colors. Does your television automatically capture all the subtle shades of difference between this surfer in deep blue, this blue surfboard, and the blue Hawaiian surf? If not, wait till you see color, even color this close on Color Track 1980. Color Track 1980, with eight automatic color systems designed to lock even subtle shades of color on track. RCA is making television better and better. Do you believe I forgot to change my antifreeze? You know how embarrassing it is having your toe truck toe? You should have kept your guard up. <laughs> Get it, animal. Fat chance, Slim. Should have kept your guard up. Keep your guard up with Dowguard antifreeze. Dowguard protects against freeze-ups, boil-overs, rust, and corrosion all year round. Dowguard coolant antifreeze. Six. Bobby, I think Three. you got him. Just remember, keep your guard up. The problem? United States Steel wanted any service rep in any district sales office to be able to check the status of a customer's order on the spot and in detail. This was a classic communications problem, so they called in the Bell System experts. Their solution? A network of 400 high-speed Bell terminals in 29 locations. This gives service reps instant access to the facts they need. Another case that shows the system is the solution. From historic Green Bay, Wisconsin, it'll be the Green Bay Packers tonight against the New England Patriots. The Green Bay Packers, one and three on their season. Disappointing, they have had a great deal of injuries. This is their three-year quarterback out of Furman. And he will open for the pack tonight. That has been decimated by injuries. They go against the New England Patriots, perhaps as healthy as they've been all season. The Patriots are three and one. A win tonight, and they move into a tie with the AFC Eastern leader, Miami Dolphins, at 4-1. There is Steve Grogan. He opens at quarterback. He can be dynamite, and he can have his off nights. The Green Bay Packers have won the kickoff. And you're looking at John Smith. He will do the kicking for the New England Patriots. Deep, a dangerous return man. They put him back there all alone. He's small, yes. 5'8", 174-pounder, but he can roll. Is Steve Odom. in his first year with the New England Patriots. Came in under rather shaky circumstances after the departure of Chuck Fairbanks a year ago. He's done a tremendous job with this New England Patriot team. They are number one in offense in the AFC. They are number two in defense. It's hard to find a weak spot on the Patriots. The ball is in the air. And is taken there by number 36. That's Howard Sampson. A short kick by John Smith and Sampson moves up to the 32. Let's meet the offense of the Packers. David Whitehurst, number 17. You saw him at quarterback. The two setbacks, 34, Turdell Middleton, 33, Barty Smith. Smith, a big man. James Lofton, a dangerous second-year receiver out of Stanford. At the right side, an offensive line that has had to be a juggle tonight. Concar, a potential all-pro on the left side, is not in there. Stokes is in there on the left side. Leotis Harris, 69, a two-year man out of Arkansas, opens at right guard. First and 10, the pack from their own 32-yard line. 
Lofton in motion for the Green Bay Packers. Uh, and a flag is down. Several flags are down. On the opening play, our referee tonight, Chuck Heberling, a late start, of course, because of the presidential Ball address start. tonight. Offense, number 69, moving before the snap. Leonis Harris in there starting in place of Mel Jackson. Detected with a false start. You saw the defensive front three. They, of course, play a 3-4, does the New England Patriots. Let's take a look at that second carry. The cornerback, well, Ray Claiborne, is playing the best football of his life. And you know about Mike Haynes if you follow this game at all. They have tremendous defensive talent there. And it's not weak at all on either corner with Mike Haynes and Claiborne. First down, 15. The ball back at the 27-yard line of the pack. Whitehurst. On first down, fires over the middle to the tight end. That's Paul Kaufman, a second-year man out of Kansas State. And he's nailed there by Big Sam Hunt. The game is out close to the 35-yard line, back to the original line of scrimmage, plus three. So it'll be second down and seven. Bart Starr, I believe it's Bart Starr, if you will, came into this season following last year's eight, seven, and one. Gold title holders of the Central Division of the NFC. This year, it has been nothing but disaster in terms of health of his players. Second down and eight. Whitehurst again to the air. Uh-oh. And good coverage downfield. Whitehurst had to throw it away in the general direction of Turdell Middleton, but he was picked up and covered well there by Ray Costing. Third down and eight. It's still cold here in Green Bay, as a matter of fact. It's cold the last time you were here, Don, 67. It's dropped about 20, 30 degrees this afternoon. We've got a pretty good wind kicking up. They're going to be throwing into that wind right now. Said temperature is 54. I don't believe it. No way. It's going down into the 30s tonight after a drizzle all day long. Third down, call of seven. The ball at the 35-yard line just underway. Whitehurst. Has the time, finds the pocket, finds the tight end, Coffin. Got him a first down. First down, 45-yard line of the Green Bay Packers. Mike Kane made the stop. Costick was back there. Let's take a look at it again. Frank, in uh, talking to the coaching staff earlier, I think they're going to be throwing the ball a great deal. They don't feel they have that muscle up front to move them out. You'll see Coffin come across on a clear-out route. Nobody picked him up, so they got him a good play. Whitehurst, Mark likes it awful lot. He uh, really is trying to get him in there. Move him nice and smooth, give him his confidence that he can. They do call all the plays. Barkowski sends them in by hand signal. They mark the ball at the 46 yard line of the Green Bay Packers. In motion is Turdell Middleton getting the call. The big man, Barty Smith, and he pounds into the left side and he runs into a lot of opposition there. Rod Schoet defensively, Richard Bishop closing down. Gain of maybe a yard. Call it second down and nine. You mentioned that cold day in 67, Howard. I think uh, as we look at the conditions here tonight, I don't think there's anything quite like it. I was broadcasting a time for CBS. Kickoff at 13 below zero. That's it. I remember it well. Mark Starr, of course, sneaking in. Final play of the game, the Packers to win the NFL title. Second down and eight. Back Look out. Underneath. Throws too hard. Lofton does not hold on. Short pass. Right. Harris almost took his hands off. <laughs> That's right. I haven't been back since that one either. Somebody up there doesn't. What are they doing sending me to Cleveland and Green Bay on back-to-back -back weeks? Dramatic two Monday nights for the dandy one. That ball was thrown too hard, Frank. He had Lofton coming in on kind of a little delayed, trying to get under that. The linebackers, they, uh, we've talked about them before. We had this, the Patriots against Pittsburgh in their opener. They do, they cover an awful lot of ground. Trying to get that three mat front. Now look at them, they got five guys down. Third down, Whitehurst looks it over. Plays call for Whitehurst from the bench. Mel Lunsford got back. Trying to throw it into Lofton, and he cannot hold on on the slant. He would not have had the first down. Well covered by the man we spoke of earlier, Ray Claiborne. He was all over Lofton. It'll be fourth down. And that will produce David Beverly. There is Ray Claiborne. Great speech throughout the University of Texas. First round draft pick, of course, in 77. Beverly and Stanley Morgan has dropped deep for the New England Patriots, standing close to his 13-yard line. Beverly rated third in the NFL, or rather NFC, coming into tonight in the punting department. There is Morgan. He can fly. Oh, he almost oh, got it. and it was close. Tim Fox made a go for it, and Morgan does not go with the fair catch. 
takes the gamble and gets out to the 25-yard line. But the New England Patriots, the number one team in the AFC, offensively will have their first possession of the night and will be back at Lambeau Stadium in a moment. Now there's a way to type that gets your paperwork done right and done faster. No problem typing from Lanier. You want your work back error-free? No problem. Corrections are made here instead of on paper. Want to move a paragraph? No problem. Add or delete a sentence? No problem. Want your typing back sooner? No problem. Electronic typing from Lanier. Call your local Lanier office. Here's to good friends. Tonight is kind of special. How you holding up? I'm all right. You want to go for 10 miles? If you make it, I'll buy you a beer. If we make it, I'll buy you a loan, brow. When you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brow. Tonight, let it be low and brow. On NCAA College Football, one of the biggest rivalries, the Michigan Wolverines battle the Spartans of Michigan State Saturday on ABC. The co-Big Ten champions of last year, one loss apiece, both to Notre Dame, in addition will be in you two Division II showdowns, Western Illinois against Eastern Illinois. Eastern Illinois, of course, ranked number one in Division II football, and Southwest Missouri State versus Lincoln of Jefferson City, Missouri. Check the listing for the game in your area. First and ten, the Patriots, the quarterback of course, Steve Grogan, the ball at the 25-yard line. Sam Cunningham, 39, the single setback. Grogan on first and ten goes to the air. As a man open, fires, and it's complete off to Stanley Morgan. Stanley Morgan has a first down at the 39-yard line, and they have two blazing outside wide receivers. Cunningham, of course, having a great year. Andy Johnson is in there at the moment. Number 32 is the other setback, and you saw the big tight end, number 81, Russ Francis. The offensive line, and Dwight Wheeler doing well on that left side. Leon Gray, the all-pro, of course, traded earlier in the year to Houston. On first down, broken immediately to the air. Fires to Andy Johnson complete, and Grogan is two for two. Johnson picks up close to nine yards. It'll be second and one. Hit there by Rich Wingo, a rookie middle linebacker for the Green Bay Packers, and they have had troubles defensively. They might even have to slide into a 3-4 tonight because of the shortage of defensive linemen. There they are. Rich Wingo in the middle. And a secondary, well, quite frankly, well, you don't know whether it's as questionable as the defensive line that does not penetrate. They have only six sacks in the year thus far. That puts a lot of pressure on your secondary. Second and nine. Cunningham, left side. And the big one pulls for a first down close to midfield. Sam Cunningham, he has been steady, blocker, a runner, a good receiver. His last 100-yard game way back in 77. His coach says he's just simply the best fullback in football. Now, that's saying something. Coach, of course, Ron Earhart, who has 25 of his former North Dakota State football players in attendance tonight. First and 10, the ball just short of midfield. Grogan, three times on first and 10, has gone to the area. It's Morgan again. He's three for three, moving to the 43-yard line, where it'll be second down and three. First time I've seen Green Bay play this year, Frank, but I've never seen uh, cornerbacks playing as deep as they as these two guys do. It's going to be hard to get them deep, but boy, he can sure work out there in front of them a lot. They have a tendency, I think, without the pass rush to anticipate everything deep. They know that without that pass rush, they're going to have to stay with that receiver for a lot longer than they would with any kind of pressure. Ball marked just outside the 43. Call it second down and three. This is Andy Johnson. And good pursuit by the pack. Turns Johnson back from the first down at the 40-yard line. Very close to it, however. Gary Weaver defensively there for Green Bay 52 and Steve Luke coming up from safety and Andy Johnson is down. Andy Johnson who missed all of 77 with a knee injury performing well thus far this season is the injured New England Patriot will be back in a moment. Buick proudly announces some very fine cars and some very good thinking. This is the 1980 Century Limited sedan. My sister thinks it's very sophisticated. My dad thinks it's economical. My mother thinks it's roomy. I think I'm lucky to have it tonight. 
this is the limited edition Regal Somerset. I think it's elegant proof that a truly sensible car doesn't have to be boring. 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 This is the Buick Riviera, an automobile so incredible that people who could seriously think about buying almost any car in the world are driving Rivieras. Now, this is a 1980 Buick Skyhawk. Four-speed, V6 engine. I think it's really me. And she thinks, eh, she'll get used to it. Do you think that owning a 1980 Buick might be a good idea? Good thinking. Sunday, women couldn't resist him. Men would do anything to destroy him. Vampire. Andy Johnson is the injured New England Patriot running back. Carried the ball on the second down. Big pile up. Let's take a look at it again. You think that it's knee what they're working on. I didn't see it happen. Frank, let's see if we can pick it up here. Just follow the block. He didn't pick up the first down. Came really close. Head on right there. Somebody looks like they got him. Just a whole bunch of them piled on. Oh, there it is. It comes back across the top, pulled it over the top, probably twisted it some. As I mentioned before, Andy Johnson missed all of the season of 77, had knee surgery, came back and had close to 700 yards rushing a year ago, complimenting the running of Sam Cunningham. Not a breakaway threat, but a good steady ball player for Coach Ron Earhart. Got good hands. He can do it. He can catch it. Third down and short here. These guys, we mentioned that difficulty that Green Bay has had with injuries and they really have they've lost Ezra Johnson it looked like for about three two or three more weeks was told before the game so they're trying to plug in with some guys that some of them are some rookies some of them are some really uh, inexperienced sort of players that they've got in there they haven't tried to run much so far it's early in the ball game but I would think that this big line that New England has uh, should be able to push them out pretty good you know, you mentioned the rookie, Charlie Johnson, over the right side defensively for the Green Bay Packers, number 99. He's up against probably one of the best, if not the best, blocking guard in all of football, and John Hanna. And I, I bet he had a long afternoon thinking about it. I would imagine he did, too. You know, Hanna has had a little oh, nagging injury. I think it's his ankle. Uh, they all had such a big game last week against uh, San Diego, and Hanna in particular was really pleased with being part of that game. But talking to trainers and coaches, they say Hanna's at full steam. And you look at a young rookie, he's six foot one, he's not really that big, or not that tall, six foot one, about 200, maybe 50 or 60. But you're right, Hannah's right there in front of him, and they like to run to that side either, uh, that side uh, anyway, on that left side of that offensive line. Dwight Wheeler, Bill in for Leon Gray that you mentioned, or Wimpy, he's just coming in there and doing a heck of a job for him. Third, less than a yard to go for the New England Patriots. No score, 10-42, remaining in the first quarter. That's Pete Brock. Plays tight end on short yardage and hurdling over the 40-yard line for a first down. The big fullback, Sam Cunningham. And it will be first and 10 for the New England Patriots. And three times on first down thus far have put the ball in the air. New England likes to use three tight ends from time to time. Brock, Hasselbeck, and Francis. They used the three of them on the key play that won against San Diego last week. Wound up with a pass to Francis. First and ten. The ball just short of the 38-yard line of the Green Bay Packers. Logan puts everyone in the pattern. This is Cunningham, and he's wide open. All right. The short of the first down at the 29-yard line. Mike McCoy was there early. Also hustling into the play was Rich Wingo, the middle linebacker. Two quarterbacks were coming up trying to put some pressure on those outside receivers. I don't think it was a it was a blitz. It wasn't a maximum blitz at all. It appeared to me that the linebackers got a little confused with their coverage and left him wide open out there in that little middle zone. They're moving this thing down rather methodically, aren't they? Each time on first down, Grogan has put it in the air. And four he's had four. a receiver on each occasion. Ah. him once again. And the big man rolls inside the 25, close to the 22, up into there by Johnny Gray. Sam Cunningham came up a number one draft pick back in 73. He has came into tonight's game a little over 400 yards short of becoming the all-time leading rusher for the New England Patriots. Another first down. Out to the right is Harold Jackson having a whale of a year, as is Stanley Morgan, who splits to the left, top of the screen, number 86. Two dangerous speedsters on the flanks for Grogan. Play action. <laughs> Gives it off to Calhoun, reverses it field. 
<laughs> Look at Calhoun. He's finally ridden down by McCoy, but not until he's inside the 15, close to the 11-yard line. We we got to get a shot of Grogan, too. When he saw him coming back that way, he said, wait a minute. And he comes back in. Let's see if we can pick up Grogan again. Calhoun, they had it pretty well blocked off. Good bit of racing on the right side. You'll see right, right there. Nice, nice move. Now then, here comes Grogan. He said, wait a minute. I'm supposed to do something. Now I want you to watch this. He didn't come close to blocking yeah. anybody. But Calhoun got down and picked him up a first down. He sure did. And right there you see the versatility of this New England team. Calhoun, the in-between, a slightly smaller than a fullback, bigger than a halfback, but with the speed to execute that kind of improvisation. That's Calhoun in motion. Cunningham gets the toss. He bobbles the ball. Oh, don't do that. And you got to pick it up, boy. Green Bay comes up with it. Yes, Park. sir. Kozilarski. Why, when a quarterback moves the team steadily, gets the ball down within 12 yards of the end zone, does he pitch it backwards? Well, it's a good play if it works, but he just it's it's a little a bit out in front, and he didn't quite pick it up. I think it was 75, Barzalaskis. There he is with that big hulk all over the ball, and Green Bay gets out of trouble. 8.32 remaining in the first quarter. They'll have a first and 10. Barzalowskis, the one-time Jets number one draft choice, was a doubtful starter. Bart only decided to play him when he saw him in the workout before the game. The ball is just over the 15-yard line. There are a lot of doubtful players out there for the Green Bay Packers tonight. We'll talk about them over the course of the evening. Lofton, the intended receiver, uh, intercepted. Uh, Fox, the free safety. Tim Fox, and he returns it to the 27-yard line. He's tackled there by the intended receiver, James Lofton. Jimmy oh. Fox is a superb defensive back. I think you all who follow football know that out of Ohio State. Teams beautifully with Mike Ames. And he's on cloud nine tonight because his wife just delivered unto him a nine-pound, six-ounce baby daughter. Somebody oh. got a finger on this early, I believe. May have. It was not badly thrown, a little bit wide. Uh, I think you're probably right. Maybe it was tipped a little bit. It has been a hard catch, but catchable. Lofton has been suddenly missing some of them this year. Whitehurst, on his side, has been having trouble getting it to him. To One first and ten. Jackson and Grogan. Went to Harold Jackson. He wanted the touchdown just off the fingertips. Knox says, I'm going to intercept the pass tonight because I do want you to say hello to my wife and new baby girl. The second one he has got home, he said, tell everybody that everybody's doing fine. That's what he is. See, there you did it. He's one of those first-round draft picks that came from the Jim Plunkett trade. Last pass. That, excuse me, Frank, that last pass uh, was the first time that I, I would almost even call that one not a very good pass because it was rifled. Jackson had a... A hole down there in the middle. That's where he tried to drop it over and lay it in that hole. He uh, rifled it and nobody, didn't, nobody was there. Grogan, four or five, second down and ten. Flag is down. Grogan has Francis in the end zone. He sure does. The flag is down. Well, we'll have to see what the call is, but right there you saw an evidence of why Russ Francis is so great. The size. Let's get this call. Outside. Defense. Six points, New England. He's got the size, he's got the speed to go with it. He can go deep. I saw an excellent article in the Sunday New York Times as you watch this again by Bill Wallace on the growth and development of the modern-day tight end. It began with the smallish tight ends like Pete Retzlaff and Joe Walton, about whom we said so much in the Giant game a couple of weeks back. Walton, the offensive coach of the Redskins. Let's watch the game. Johnny Gray, 5'11", trying to cover 6'6", Russ Francis. No chance. This is John Smith for the conversion. And then came the power tight ends like Ditka and like Ron Kramer. And now today, they are the big ones as you look at this play with Russ Francis in isolation. The huge ones like Russ Francis Boy, and Dave Casper. I'll tell you, you have to hold up a tight end. He was not even touched that time as he came off the line of scrimmage by Gary Weaver. And that's how to make alienate the affections of your safety man. We'll be back. The laser. One of several technologies IBM has put to work Printing. This IBM innovation, a laser printer, uses light to print over 200 pages a minute. IBM is constantly working on ways to print more information clearly, quickly, and inexpensively, like this IBM inkjet printer 
that pumps ink drops through a nozzle one half the diameter of a human hair to make letters. It prints as neatly as the newest typewriters, only a lot faster. Or this IBM band printer that uses an etched steel band to print information from a computer inexpensively. At IBM, we don't just help you get information, we help you get it down on paper. IBM, helping put information to work for people. The Pope arrives in the United States on the news after the game. The 1,000th game played by the Green Bay Packers being played tonight, and I guess appropriately on Monday night. New England has a 7 or nothing lead. We have 8-13 remaining in the first quarter. Steve Odom is deep for Green Bay. John Smith pumps it, and Odom will have an opportunity. The speedster. And he gets it out to the 22-yard line. Hustling down there for New England, Don Hasselbeck. A big tight end who would probably start for a lot of teams. He sees a lot of action from New England, but he is a gifted athlete, as is the man who plays in front of him, Russ Francis. And there he is. Russ Francis from Hawaii. Be sure to say I'm from Hawaii. Has his own airplane service over there. Don refused to get in one. I'd like to, as a matter of fact. <laughs> that would be fun, go through the island with Russ Francis. Under Thompson in motion. This is Turdell Middleton, and Middleton gets out over the 25, close to the 27 for a pickup of three, where it'll be second down and seven. There by Richard Bishop, defensively for New England, number 64, is playing superb football for the New England Patriots. In addition to all the injuries Green Bay has suffered that Frank mentioned earlier, there is the problem of youth. Nine rookies on the squad. Bart Starr still in a rebuilding process. Second down. And off goes to Barty Smith, and Barty Smith hurls his bulky body out to the 30-yard line for a gain of three, where it'll be third down and four. The problem any Green Bay coach has here is the problem of a memory and a legend. Even Bart Starr, who's meant so much to successful football in this town, has to give way because you walk down a street and it's Lombardi Avenue. And all they remember is the years of glory, Packer glory. Ball resting right at the 30-yard line. Whitehurst, the quarterback, puts James locked into the right. Floods his backs to the right. Got him wide open. Flag is down. Usually where you're going to get a holding call. He had a man open, but he was very busy back there with a lot of New England Patriots right in his face. It's an interesting mixture, Don. I think of the... Let's... It's an interesting mixture, mixture, Don, of those Patriot linebackers. The huge ones like Hunt, and then the quick, swift ones like Show. Only 215 pounds on the outside. I really am impressed with, with the team. Uh, I think... That defensive unit there, Frank has mentioned the two outstanding cornerbacks. They've got good safety, so I think that's a, those two areas are really super. You've got the linebackers, the safety, and we've talked about that. Uh, they're just not weak anywhere. They don't really have any glaring weaknesses. Well, our number one draft pick is another safety to come, Rick Sanford from South Carolina. Beverly to punt for the Green Bay Packers on fourth down. Stanley Morgan standing at his 40-yard line. Beverly had to hustle that kick. Morgan watches it bound. Moves away from it. Packers get a roll, and it moves inside the 30, close to the 28-yard line, where New England will have possession. Bob Kreider in there hustling Beverly's punt. Bart Starr has done just about everything you could in football. Had this team... He thought, I think Green Bay Packers felt, turned around last year with an 8-7-1 mark, tied Minnesota, Central Division. They lost according to the playoff for the tie-breaking procedures. And then the wheels started to come off. Well, that loss that they suffered to Minnesota, that's the one that really killed Paul. On first and ten, Grogan again. Nope, this time it's the draw. Hands off to Cunningham. And Cunningham... Picked up at the line of scrimmage. Struggles maybe for a yard. Mike Douglas was there defensively for Green Bay first. And then, of course, the Packers. Their number one draft pick, Eddie Lee Ivory out of Georgia Tech, a great All-American running back, went down in the Bears' very first game, or the Packers' very first game against the Bears. That hurt. 
That sure did hurt. That almost killed them, but their number two draft choice, Steve Atkins, and we're sure to see something of him tonight, has looked very good out of Maryland. Second down, call it eight. Ball at the 31-yard line. Brogan quickly to Morgan. Knocked it in the air. Johnny Gray has it. Johnny Gray. All right. A free agent came up as a rookie in 75. He's turned into quite an athlete, and he wears quite a number. If you're a Packer fan, you know it was worn by another free agent who played for so many years here, Willie Wood. Willie Wood. 24 was Wood. Let's look at this again. You see him read that blitz real well, very quickly. Tries to throw it, appears to me, threw it a little bit behind him and a little bit hard. Ball bounced in the air. The old tip drill comes into use one more time. Green Bay has the ball inside the 42-yard line of the New England Patriots. The Packers down 7-0. Cordell Middleton is in motion. Screens are locked in. A lateral it was. Locked and hangs up what appears to be a pass. <laughs> Perfectly legal. Well, it was a lateral out to Lofton. He threw downfield in the general direction of Thompson. And <laughs> they didn't fool anybody. The idea no, was Johnny. good. That is an illustrious number worn by Johnny Gray of California pulling in the free agent. This is the one they were going to hit on. I'm sure they've been working on this all week, so this is a sure touchdown. They're not going to do it again either. He just done the throw about, let's see, seven or eight yards. More than that, there were two New England defenders downfield. Tim Fox was there almost with the interception. Did not fool him at all. Second and ten. The ball inside the 42-yard line. A good look at David Whitehurst. Passing a little over 60% coming into tonight's game. but he falls forward to the 12-yard line, hit there by Tim Fox. That was a beautifully thrown ball by David Whitehurst. That's the first time tonight he's shown us touch. Fairly well covered this time by Ray Costick, number 55. You'll see that Cardell slips out of the backfield a little bit late. The ball's right there, and from the quarterback's uh, position, there's not much to drop it in, and he did, right like number two washed up, right over his head. Costick, of course, the man that Ray Perkins wanted because he's good on pass coverage. But then, right there, a perfect throw by White. A partisan crowd waving their pom-poms, the Packers. And Whitehurst hands off to Barty Smith, who would have kept his feet, he would have been in the end zone. As it is, he gets on inside the five. He'll have a first and goal, I do believe. I'm anxious to see that. That was a big hole over there. Nobody hit him at the line of scrimmage. Let's see what we can come up with. Well, this is a big back, too. Man, they just pushed them all in. Yeah. Pretty good move. He was it outside. He was the first round draft choice from Richmond back in 74. It's taken him some years to develop, but he achieved respectability last year and may be on his way to his best year this year. That was Harrison Cook over there. The guard tackle did him a good block. As you can see, it was short of the first down, and David Whitehurst did not like ah. the men he was operating with. The plays are called from the bench. Yep. And sideline side line apparently yeah. signaled to Whitehurst to call timeout, and which he promptly did to move over and have a visit with head coach Bart Starr. That's Zeke Bratkowski in the yellow blazer standing next to Bart Starr, a couple of NFL quarterbacks. We're going to pause five seconds and allow our local stations all along the line to identify themselves. WLUK, TV 11, Green Bay. that bore out a little bit of what Howard said a moment ago. You don't find established teams with veteran players being forced to use a timeout. You yeah, never know when you're going to need them. Down the line, we saw earlier, I forget exactly which game it was, where it cost the team dearly not to have that extra timeout that they needed towards the end of the first half. I agree with that in principle. It really makes sense. I think it's very important for Green Bay when they're down here, then they got to put, they got to get six. Second down, about a half a yard short of a first down. Cordell Middleton slipped, but he regained his balance. He is close to a first down. I believe he has it. Middle of the New England defensive unit in there on the stop, headed by Rod Schoet. That was Middleton's best performance of the year a week ago against Minnesota. He's had an assortment of ailments. Had a sore knee, an ankle. He's had what they call turf toe. And last week, healthy, he went for 90 yards against the Vikings. 
thousand yard gainer a year ago. First and goal. Ball inside the two. Marty Smith. Oh yeah. Easy. Oh yeah. Green Bay's on the scoreboard. Yes, sir. So what looked like a potential route just a couple of minutes ago with that touchdown peg from Brogan to Russ Francis is back to being a ball game. And look at those Green Bay fans. Number 69 over there is Harris, 68's Cook. And man, he just came right over the top. And he got him. Hey, that Leotis Harris getting his start tonight in place of Mel Jackson. He was a big factor in that first of Barty Smith. Here's Chester Markle. Whoa. Huh. He hit that one low. And he just hit it to the upright. But we have a tie football game. Over 56,000, a capacity crowd in Green Bay looking on. We'll be back right after this message. The world won't stop when you want to photograph it, but the Olympus OM-10 can stop the world. The OM-10 is fully automatic. This Olympus tells you when you can shoot and when you can't. You change lenses in seconds with the OM-10. Or put on a winder and lock in the action at three frames per second. The Olympus OM-10 even has a self-timer, so you can get in the action instead of just watching it. With Olympus OM-10, great shots automatically. Searching for oil here in the U.S. had gotten harder and harder. We had laid miles of heavy seismic cable just about everywhere we could. Then, Phillips came up with a new way to search, using portable units like this. It works in mountains, swamps, hundreds of places too hard to search before. So soon this country may be crawling with crews like ours, looking for oil here at home to replace some that's now being bought from foreign countries. Phillips Petroleum. Good things for cars and the people who drive them. Larry Holmes, Ernie Shavers, the highlights of their hard-fought WBC World Heavyweight title, Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports. The Green Bay Packers on the scoreboard. Johnny Gray with an interception of Steve Grogan, setting it up. He plays by Middleton, Barty Smith. Barty Smith got the score. Alan Clark is deep, awaiting Tester Markle's kickoff. Here is the rookie from Northern Arizona. He's been superb on the special team for New England. And he hustles and hurries out over the 30-yard line, up into there by Robert Kimball. By the way, Wide World of Sports on Saturday, not only the highlights of the Home Shavers Heavyweight Championship fight, and what you saw that, you really saw something, but also have World Figure Skating Champions on display and the World Speedway Motorcycle Championships. Wide World of Sports Saturday. And coming off the field is number 55, Mike Hunt, and there's the man who got it into the end zone for Green Bay. New England has shown a proclivity of towards throwing the ball on first down thus far. This is Calhoun who will replace the injured Andy Johnson. Moving over the left side for a gain of three. It'll be second down seven. You mentioned Johnson. He's got sprained knee ligaments definitely through for the night. That's the report we've gotten. Apparently on his way to the hospital right now to check for cartilage damage. It's a tough break for New England. You know of Johnson's all-purpose value as a former college quarterback. Second and seven. Morgan splits to the left. Speed on the flanks for Rogan. Look out. Oh, Harry Jackson almost picked off again by Johnny Gray. Again, that middle zone's open. He let that one fly a little bit. The one I mentioned earlier went a little bit too much on the line. Somewhere in the middle is a completion. Hey, Don, he's got a tough breeze here tonight, though it's gusting. That could have something to do with it. That's right. an interesting sign. Really is. That could get me 200 more columns. I didn't see the sign. What was it? We love how it goes up. You have a large family, don't you? They'll have to. <laughs> you said that one a week ago. I didn't don't realize they were that big. Well, they were big. Big. Earl Edwards came, comes into the ball game, picked up recently after being cut from Cleveland a year ago. Has not been playing at all, but he's in there now. 73. You might remember him with the 49ers. Later, of course, with Buffalo and Cleveland. Third down, seven. Flag is down. Grogan got him a first. Got his first down at the expense of his body, but again, a reminder, wow. flag is down at the line of scrimmage. That is the key to it, of course, but Grogan somehow seems able with that rangy. Offside. Defense. Number 77. Refuse. First down. 
That rangy body of Grogan's. That angular build. He seems to be able to escape injury. And of course, he does add that extra dimension that we talked about on the opening Monday night when Pittsburgh beat New England in overtime. He had an opportunity here to go from the sideline. He saw his first down, felt he could make it right there. He went over to it, number 38. Picking up a big post. He drove him, by the way, at off-season knee surgery for New England. They don't like to watch him run that much. This is Sam Cunningham. He bowls ahead, close to five yards, near the 49-yard line of the Green Bay Packers, where it'll be second down, long five. How do I like it so far? So far, the back is keeping the game representative. From our point of view, we hope it stays that way. Drogan Frank is averaging nine yards, well over nine yards of carry when he does run with the ball. We've talked about it many times. He is a good runner, and he is uh, big, rangy, and strong. He, he raced for over 500 yards last year. Of course, tops in the NFL for all quarterbacks. Good athlete. Sometimes if there is uh, criticism, it just doesn't take enough off the ball on the slants. Here comes Calhoun. Calhoun falls for a first down. Hit there first by Rich Wingo, but he moves ahead to the 43 and another New England first down. That kid, number 50. Keep looking at him. I think you'll hear Frank giving him a lot of calls throughout the game. A number seven draft choice from Alabama has come on very strongly. He's the guy the Green Bay camp is really raving about. I think you saw him make that play, and I think he is good. I think also because he's a rookie, you saw a little bit delay in his recognition. That was a change of flow play so he made it but he was not there in time to stop him from getting the first down the eighth for new england thus far tonight Brogan hangs it on a line out to stanley morgan it's complete at the 36 yard line a gain of seven where it'll be second down and three and that ball was in the air a long time to show you what Brogan can put on it there's no way really to defend this. Mike McCoy's a defender, but that ball is thrown so far back, low, and a good move by Morgan to come back and pick it up. The ball was really on the line, Frank. I'll tell you, I wonder why Mike McCoy is so deep. Well, just keep in mind that Stanley Morgan has blazing speed out there. If they're not back deep, they're going to roll up and go in a double zone. They didn't do it this time. Cunningham just uses sheer force as he bowls for a first down inside the 32-yard line. Michael Hunt, we understand, has been injured again. He is the man that Rich Wingo beat out of that middle linebacker spot. Michael Hunt, of course, linebacker for the Green Bay Packers. And it's doubtful he will come back in in tonight's game. So the can, problems continue to mount for Bart Starr and the Green Bay Packers. And we are seeing the end of the first quarter. And we have a 7-7 tie from Green Bay, Wisconsin. And we'll be returning in just a moment. Dale Nichols is a good little league coach and a good neighbor. I really enjoy working with kids, getting them started in the right direction. I enjoy working with people as a State Farm agent, too, especially with their life insurance. Usually, I know the families pretty well. I handle their other insurance, so I'm better able to advise them on life insurance. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. That's life insurance, the State Farm way. The Firestone Forever and the Sears Die Hard. Take a close look at the warranties. The free replacement part of the Die Hard full warranty ends after only 90 days. But if the Firestone Forever battery ever fails to hold a charge, Firestone will replace it free for as long as you own the car in which it was originally installed, provided it isn't damaged due to accident, abuse, or a bad charging system. If you need a battery and you're going to keep your car for more than 90 days, you want the Firestone Forever. Do you know what I really liked about basketball? Negotiating my contract. You know, like casually mentioning retirement just before playoff time? Well, now, you've got a chance to do some dealing yourself. The 1980 Bureaux are coming, and the dealers still have plenty of 79s left. Now, you don't have to be a wizard to know what that means. See your Bureau dealer. Of course, right now, he's a piece of cake. Just take it back this time now at your Buick dealer's place. forgotten everything of course I remember all that silly stuff that happened back in those days that reference of course to the frozen NFL championship game played in 67 here and Green Bay winning of course 
in 13 degree below zero temperature on the final play of the game. Bart Starr sneaking it in. First and 10 now, New England. The ball at the 32 yard line of the Green Bay Packers. Calhoun. And Calhoun bounces off Charlie Johnson, the rookie from Maryland, gets to the outside, but a host of Packers are there to make sure that. He doesn't pick up any yardage, headed by Steve Luke. Well, there you see the New England edge, though it doesn't show in the score, especially in total yardage and a reasonably decent two-minute edge in possession time. Still, it does not yet show in the score, all because of the Johnny Gray interception. Second down, 10. Up to the right goes Stanley Morgan. He's collected out there by Estes Hood. Up to the left is Harold Jackson. Russ Francis, and he's brought down by Steve Luke. I'll tell you something. That's a guy I respect, Steve Luke. Out of Ohio State, he is one of the better strong safeties in football. With Green Bay upon doleful days, you don't read or hear a lot about him, but look at that hit. He, he did a good job. Uh, he, he threw that pass absolutely into the heart of the strength of that defense. They were into kind of a safety zone. They had a the strong safety was up in there. Outside linebacker was in the middle. He had a couple of guys open over on the other side and he wanted to come back. Michael Hunt comes back into the game. Number 55. Third down, long four. Ball just short of the 25 yard line. Rogan, Francis. They say no. Incomplete. <laughs> now they're going to take it away from the argument. They had a safety blitz that time, pick up the blitz real well. It seems that uh, all right, we see another shot. <laughs> uh, in the middle. That was Michael Hunt that we didn't think was going to come back. That was in there that time. He's now lepping off again. On the earlier completed pass with the hit by Luke, you suggested that he threw into the heart of the defense. Yes, I did. Maybe so. But when you've got a guy Francis's size, it's no different from Dawson throwing to Otis Taylor. He can bust tackles, and that's what Luke prevented on that play. 43-yard attempt. It's a quarterback that holds. That's Matt Cavanaugh, number 12. Smith. No good. Kicking in to the wind. Ball held up. No good. And Green Bay will have the ball at the line of scrimmage, the 31-yard line. Von Earhart does not like what he sees happening and will be returning to Green Bay in a moment. Wherever you grew up, going home these days can be quite a surprise because everywhere you go, America is remodeling. So good to see the folks again. So, good to see. so many things to share. So good to see the home I knew and loved. And at Georgia Pacific, we're helping more Americans remodel with our products than ever before for living space. Oh, or enjoying space. And you can find the building materials you need at thousands of our registered dealers everywhere. Like pre-cut wood products, the plans, the ideas, the help you need to do projects yourself. Because at Georgia Pacific, we see America's older homes as one more resource we can't afford to waste. Daddy, you haven't changed a thing. Georgia Pacific. Oil, gas, coal, gypsum, timber, and the skill to manage them. On NCAA College Football, one of the biggest rivalries, the Michigan Wolverines battle the Spartans of Michigan State Saturday on ABC. From 43 yards out, not enough hit, not enough distance, and no amount of body English is going to help. John Smith is now 6 of 9 on the season. Very accurate from inside the 40, a little questionable outside. Hurt, but we're not quit. It's a pretty good attitude. First and 10, now back. It's all tied at 7, the 13-16, remaining in the first half. The ball just inside the 26-yard line of Green Bay. In motion is Thompson. And Barty Smith gets the call. Finds a little gap on the right side and uses his 200. 25 or 30 pounds to get out over the 30, close to the 31. A gain of five. It'll be second and five, upended by Richard Bishop. Left outside linebacker Mike Hawkins, 59, out of the game for the Patriots. He's been taken to the hospital. No word yet on what that injury is. You got a quick glimpse of 57 in that last play. That's Nelson. There are a few better in the game. 
second and five. Turdell Middleton gets the call. Fires the right side, gets a gain of a couple. It'll be third down and three. And remind you of you'll be watching Michigan, Michigan State. But also you'll be seeing a couple of Division II showdowns, Western Illinois against Eastern Illinois, Southwest Missouri, and we'll tell you about it in a moment. Third down three, Grogan goes up on top. Middleton with a good move gets the first down. Yes, sir. Nifty runner, Turdell Middleton. Uh, out to midfield. to Middleton. Little move on the inside. Just came back out and left him standing right there. Watch Claiborne down here at the end of this thing. Claiborne says, you get off my back. They try to lay one on him when it lasts. He says, just hold off there, fella. Now Green Bay moves it out to midfield. Super effort. Cardell Middleton. Play action by Whitehurst. He's got a man open deep as Lofton. Nice and hustling back there as he's been doing all season. Ray Claiborne tipping it away. That's what Bucko Kilroy, the sometimes brilliant director, general manager now, but head of personnel. That's what he looks for. Well, he just hey, he was playing it pretty close. Love to make a good quick move to the outside, but that speed but that's the recovery. It. That's he okay. just he really Made hey, it up in a hurry. He wants speed back there. He's got it in Mike Haynes. He's got it in Claiborne. He doesn't quite have it in this year's first round draft choice, Rick Sanford, which is why they moved him to safety. Second and ten. Barney Smith finds a little opening. Gets down to the 48-yard line. A flag is down. A pickup of a couple. A flag down at the line of scrimmage. Talk about Claiborne. He was quite a track star down in Texas. Had an electrically timed 9-4. He is not, however, a puncher. It was Claiborne who was involved in that little fisticuff section, session in the dressing room with Will McDonough, the Boston Globe writer, who covers the team. There he is, 6'1", 190-pounder. This is not to say, by the way, that McDonough is a fighter either. I wondered what that was. That was to say that was not a fighter. All right, it's got to be against Green Bay there. Illegal motion, offense, number 76, second down. Chuck Eberling calls it against Tim Stokes, who is filling in for Mark Concar of the Packers tonight. It'll be second down and 15. Walter Tullis comes in. Out comes the tight end, three wide receivers. Tullis wears number 87. Second year man out of Delaware State. There he is in motion. Mm. Good pickup. Oh, did they pick Nelson up? Good pickup. Whitehurst uh, overthrows his intended receiver, Thompson. Whitehurst on the dead run. I believe it was Nelson Steve is Nelson. down. Yep. And he's staying there. His father, by the way, has come to see him play tonight. His father, of course, Anoka, Minnesota man, has been coaching high school football up there for many years. And now watch Nelson. You'll watch him on the blitz. And boy, is he picked up here and hit. Sandwich. Sandwich right there. So Steve Nelson is down for the New England Patriots and we'll be returning in just a moment. Used to good friends. A toast. Here's to a vanishing breed. Bill Evans, bachelor. The end of a perfectly good ladies' man. To Bill Evans, a free man. 13 more hours. When you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brown. Speech! 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 Come on, you guys. You're beautiful. You see this NFL poster? It's a $2 value, and I got it for only 50 cents when I bought a set of Champions Park plugs. A terrific NFL poster for only 50 cents. And look at this. Isn't that pretty? And your car can get sure starts, improved performance, and better mileage with Champions Park plugs. It was a deal I just couldn't pass up. You know, I think I'm going to do my entire house in poster. Yes. Show your NFL team colors from your participating champion marketer. You can't buy a better plug. I'm David Hartman, a woman who got hooked by a phony ad but fought back tomorrow on Good Morning America. Well, 
with Steve Nelson still down, they can ill afford the loss of that very great player, especially with Hawkins already out. And Nelson, a bit of a homecoming. He, of course, played for Ron Earhart at North Dakota State. A lot of fans are over here. He's going up to his father's hometown. His father, Stan, as mentioned earlier, is here tonight. And what an interception he had last week. He said that was the highlight of his athletic career to be able to pick that one off in the closing minutes of the game with San Diego. They have a lot of respect for San Diego, and it's certainly well justified. That's a good football team. It really think. is. In fact, uh, they got a lot of respect for the American Football Conference and a great deal of pride in it. That's why they take this game, quite apart from the question of standing, so seriously. Thus far, the AFC and in interconference competition has won nine of 13 games. The NFC only four. I don't like Steve it. Nelson continues to be administered to, and a stretcher is being brought out from the Green Bay Packer bench side. You saw Ron Earhart, his coach, run out to check on what is happening. And again, watch number 57. He was in on the blitz. It looks to me, Frank, that either he got his head or his shoulder. Let's go forth, 57. Ooh. And coming in, that's Turdell Mitchell. So they caught him like right in the middle. So it's either a shoulder or a or head. The, or the or neck or head. You yeah. may be right. It done that replay. It looked more like the neck and the head. But they got him right at the same time. So, uh, well, let's hope it's not too bad. Well, see Steve Nelson being taken from the field. Don't like to see this. Howard, last week, Frank and I went out to dinner last night, and uh, you're talking about the magic of Green Bay, and they, it hasn't been that much magic up here for them athletically in the last few years, but everywhere we went, man, they really, this thing is sold out, totally sold out. One guy came over, and he was talking, and we asked him, was he coming to the game? He says, no, man, I can't. He says, I'm a truck driver. He said, but I got my name on that list, and they told me I'll get some tickets in about eight years. <laughs> So that's uh, more than that. He wasn't upset about it. No, he's no. That's, I don't. I don't expect him. I've got my name on the list. I'll so get him in eight years. The point being that somehow the magic of this one of the cradles of professional football is still here. They're so proud of this team. First time though this year. You're talking to Bart. They've really started getting on Bart's ticket a little bit. This is his fifth year, and I think when he started, he more or less indicated he said look give me five years and we'll get this thing kind of put back to shape and see how it goes uh, yeah but Frank made the point Don earlier and I think it's valid Bart thought he was on the way last year with the eight seven and one and the end and look at the injuries tonight yeah, I think he was I think you worry about this business he says first I'll give you some players and next I got to keep them healthy so uh, you I see can't... that star will make it <laughs> <laughs> well that's and we've said many times, if you're going to get somebody from Central Casting to play quarterback, call him Bart Starr. I, mean, I never heard of a better name than that. But look, it all began here in what, 1919? Curly Lambeau, a tremendous football team then, rolled up more than 500 points, lost only 12, lost only one game, their final game, to the Beloit Fairies. <laughs> You've got to be kidding. No, it's the truth. No, it is not. Honest to goodness. The Beloit the Fairies. That's exactly right. And well, you said it first, goes, Steve. We'll yeah. give you a full report on the condition of Steve Nelson just as soon as we receive our information. Great young man and a great football player. And you hate to see this happen. But look at that panoramic view of Lambeau Field here. Yeah. Through all of the years, Caroline Lambeau, Arnold Herbert. Don Hudson, Johnny Blood, Johnny Laws, and then, of course, the Lombardi years. And at halftime tonight, a special feature. I think you'll enjoy it as you once more get a glimpse of one of the greatest men ever connected with the game of football, Vincent T. Lombardi. Steve Nelson has been taken from the field. There have been changes for Green Bay. Jim Colbreth, a three-year man out of Oklahoma, has been cut a couple times by the Green Bay Packers. Who's in there one set back, number 31. Nate Simpson, who usually comes in in passing situations, number 48, is the other set back. And three wide receivers. Walter Tullis, 87, teams with Lofton, number 80, and Thompson, number 89. Third down, 15. The ball at the 45-yard line of the pack. Got him wide open. Wide open is Lofton. Yes, sir. And Lofton has our first down. He's down to the 28-yard line. Threw that ball well under pressure. He had some pressure coming in back there. They're the number one team in snack sacks in football with 22. Whitehurst stepped up. Let's see it again. I think we had a slight slip back here by Fox, but I don't think it made much difference. The ball was thrown in good timing. 
Cox was coming over, and Lofton just made a good move. Don't you love the stride of this kid, Lofton, when he gets the football? I kind love of like an Angelo. Watch it. Long stride right there, and then again. I think Claiborne thought he had a little help from the inside. Fox slipped down. 28-yard pickup, first and 10 from the 27-yard line of New England. And this is Middleton, and Middleton turns the corner. It's inside the 25 you to talk, the 22-yard line. A gain of four. It'll be second and six. You talk about second effort. You saw it right there. Middleton not coming into this game healthy. A doubtful commodity. We didn't know until 8 o'clock our time whether or not he would really start. Put his head down and rammed through an extra yard and a half. What a real boost to the Green Bay. That was a third down and about a 15 where they picked up that big first down. So now they're down there moving with a second and about five. At the 22 yard line. Cordell Middleton finds an opening. Oh, oh, oh. And Middleton down close to the 15 yard and line. Another Green Bay first down. I'll tell you, this ball club is going to miss Steve Nelson. The Pats, I mean, of course. So they're going right in the middle there. They're trying to work off of McGarr in the center. Go forth and Harris. And there's Turdell. He'll follow him. Bill Matthews is in there defensively, number 53. Steve King, number 52, for New England defensively. First and 10. Whitehurst has a man Next. open. There it is. Thompson. Oh, Andre Thompson. Good, it. beautifully. Andre Thompson leaving Mike Haynes a step behind, and Whitehurst right on target. That was a good offensive play. They had a little show from the offensive line as if it would be a run to this side. So the pack, at least at the moment, as we look at it from the end zone, is back and ahead. They had trailed at 1.7 to nothing. If they convert, it'll be 14 to 7. Chester Marco on for the conversion. Well, I don't know how he got around him as slick as he did, but he made a quick move somehow. Wait a minute, hey. <laughs> And Marco flirting again with a misconversion, but he gets it through. <laughs> so Green Bay has a 14 to 7 lead. 9.03 remaining in the first half. Look at it again. You see this slight move to the right side. Whitehurst sets up good looks and then comes back. And somehow Thompson had a step on it. And he's right there. They isolated him. Thompson and Whitehurst team up and put the Packers on top with 9.03 remaining in the first half, and we'll be back in a moment. Antifreeze, you never think about it or how it has to protect somebody beside you or what could happen without it. Stranded in freezing weather and no help for miles. Don't trust your luck. Don't trust the weather. Take out old, weak antifreeze now and put your trust in Prestone 2. More people trust Prestone than all other brands Sweet. combined. Boy, have I been worried about you? More people trust Prestone. And when you flush your cooling system, trust Prestone Super Flush. Now there's a way to type that gets your paperwork done right and done faster. No problem typing from Lanier. You want your work back error-free? No problem. Corrections are made here instead of on paper. Want to move a paragraph? No problem. Add or delete a sentence? No problem. Want your typing back sooner? No problem. Electronic typing from Lanier. Call your local Lanier office. The most important event in baseball beginning Tuesday night, October 9th, live at 8 Eastern, the World Series on ABC. And of course, our ABC coverage of the World Series will begin in the ballpark of the American League champion next Tuesday night. Howard will be there. Don and Fran and I will be in Oakland on Monday night for Miami and Oakland. Here is Alan Clark, a rookie 10th round draft pick out of Northern Arizona. Been spectacular on special teams. Chester Marco, who has given us some weird kicks tonight, drills it downfield. Taken there by Rick Sanford, a rookie number one draft pick out of South Carolina. And Sanford bowls his way out close to the 25-yard line where New England troubled by a scrappy, battling Green Bay Packer bunch tonight. Dandy, I'm afraid you are right. A what? preliminary report, and that's all we have, nothing definite, is that the injury is to Steve Nelson's head. Oh, well, I'm sorry I was right. Sanford 
Brings it out to the 23-yard line. 8.53 now remaining in the first half. Sam Cunningham, single setback. Calhoun, 44, in the wingback slot, bottom of your picture. Cunningham gets the call. Hanna is out in front of it. Flag is down, and Cunningham goes out of bounds. Driven out of bounds at the 30-yard line. That's the lad who scored the touchdown on Griff Thompson. His sixth reception this far on the year, and a big one it was for Green Bay. Holding offense on the 62. Dwight Wheeler, the left tackle for New England, holding. And they try to string that play out. Looked like Dwight just reached up and grabbed the jersey or something, trying to get around that corner. You know, I got a similar feeling tonight than I, as I did last night. I mean, last week when, when we were in Cleveland, when Green, when uh, this New England team opened this thing up, you thought maybe they could just run anywhere they wanted to. This thing has turned around a little bit now, and we've got ourselves a good ball game. We certainly do, and you can sense the tide at the moment. Going Green Bay's way steadily. First down and 20. I wonder how many of the viewers recognize the face of Bill Curry. And Green Bay has gone to the 3 4. A short on defensive oh, line. Oh, 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 picked off. It's Steve Luke. Stepped right in front of that pass. I don't know whether Grogan saw him. He had put it right in Luke's hands. And Green Bay will have a first and goal. Well, that's the young man I talked about. Steve Luke of Ohio State. The strong safety. The crowd is going crazy. Uh, and Ron Earhart is now a much more assured coach as we look at this from the end zone than he was the opening Monday night game of the year when he left Grogan in despite several adversities. This time he may not be loath to put in Matt Cavanaugh. Or Tom Owen. Well, it certainly has turned around. Son of a gun. That's a kid who led his team in unassisted tackles. Is leading them again this year. And now Green Bay, out on the field, has indicated that they're calling timeout once again. That is the case. Green Bay, apparently, with some but not in the game, they should have been, or otherwise, it's called timeout. We'll be back. General Motors does make a lot of cars, but a lot of people don't know that we are the biggest producer of diesel electric locomotives. My kids call it, they call it the locomotive factory. John Schranz, locomotive tester. This is who we are and what we do at General Motors. We test the final product. When we start the locomotive up for the first time, it rumbles a little bit and it runs. It's just a great feeling. They call us the glory people, but it takes everybody to make a product. Everybody's got to be good, and they are. They are craftsmen in their own way. It's hard to explain it. It is a relationship, man and his machine. That engine is probably the best engine in the world. We need the railroad industry. There's no two ways around it. We are part of it, and I think we do a heck of a job. General Motors. People building transportation to serve people. On ABC's Wide World of Sports, the World Speedway Motorcycle Championship. High-speed turns and no brakes, Saturday. That's the lad who made the interception. We've complimented him. He is a terrific ball player and one of the best one-on-one -on -one tacklers in football. First down, Green Bay, Steve Leak. Luke setting it up, picking off a Grogan pass. Look out, boy. Oh, Barty Smith. boy. And Barty Smith falls to the five-yard line. Pick up a five. Bill Matthews. And it'll stop for New England. He got to have a feeling they anticipated that blitz by New England that time. It looked like they were going to get Whitehurst. They had it set up, going to the outside, flipped it out to Smith. Picked him up some good yardage. Defensively now for New England, there has to be a bit of concern because not only is Steve Nelson gone, Mike Hawkins, who was having a tremendous year outside left linebacker for New England, he's out of the game, injured. And we have Bill Matthews, number 52, and then, or rather 53, and Steve King, 52, in there defensively now, linebacker. One second and goal. Flag is down, and down. Lofton catches the ball, but again, a flag is down. More than that, I thought the official rule that he was out of bounds. I think, I think he did. Offside. Defense. Touchdown. Touchdown. No, wait a minute. Oh. He, I think 
he might have made an error. He made yeah. a mistake. That Another grievous one. Hey, oh, well. Chuck Heberling going to get it all straightened out. And he's going to tell us that he gave the wrong options, perhaps. To Green Bay. I would have I guess yeah, he did. Now he's, now he's going to probably take the five or half the distance to the goal. Well, a lot of electricity, a lot of excitement up here. Now it's now it's gone right. Now watch watch the catch and you'll see that the official quite properly indicates that what's this? One in, one out, what? no catch. Well, wait a minute. Wait no a minute. Catch. Now, if you're assisted out by that defensive back, it's still supposed to be there. Let's see if, if Clayburton is touching him when he goes up. Little Studio 54 number. It didn't work. Half the distance to the goal. Offsides New England. Second down and goal. The ball at the two. Turdell Middleton. Turn back. Richard Bishop. Pop. Middleton slowed him up, and the rest of the New England defense collapsed on him. It's one of those occasions where you think if you'd given it to the first guy through, he may have scored. He was trying to follow Smith that time. It looked like Smith right. So there's Ron Athot, and suddenly the look is a trouble look, understandably. Meanwhile, word about Steve Nelson en route to the hospital. A moderate to severe concussion is the report. Middleton spun his way almost to the goal line. Third and goal. Touchdown. Middleton gets it in for Green Bay. And Green Bay oh. extends their lead over the New England Patriots. What a surprise. Look at Bart. He's happy, isn't he? I'll bet you if they hadn't made it that time, they'd have gone for it again. And you saw Bart Starr. There is the young man who was so critical during that drive. Playing himself a tremendous game and playing hurt. Chester Marco, who put the thrill back into the conversion tonight. He has. He better <laughs> get a little higher. He's aiming for the left upright. <laughs> yeah. The time is blocked. He's got the two previous ones low, and this one they block. You can see it coming. Oh, Bart's in wait a minute. He didn't like that. All right, let's see what we can pick up on the dust down there. Going left. Good lead block in there by Smith, but yeah, Turdell does most of it on his own. He gets Haynes' head up. Haynes couldn't quite do it. That's, yeah, pretty stacked up in there. It's awfully hard. It was less than a yard to go. That's Tim Fox coming in trying to pull in there. Yep. Okay, Turdell. I'll tell you, they went over the left side where Concar is absent tonight, and Tim Stokes is over there. He must have made some block. They just didn't let him penetrate, Frank. They held him in there a little bit, gave him just a little push across. I think when Smith came through first, he kind of unlodged that first little bit of, of uh, line pressure. Turdell did the rest of them. You've okay. got to figure that New England will come back. They're just too good a football team to fall apart. But at the same time, they've got to get better quarterback, at least tonight. Now the kids have got their attention. <laughs> Chester Marco, the kickoff. You had a quick look at number 35. Alan Clark, he's positioned at his five-yard line, at anticipating a deep kick. He gets a low-line drive. Tries a one-hop and bobbles it. He's picked up there quickly. I don't believe by it. <laughs> Mosai Tatupu and Tatupu out over the 15 to the 17. Hey. Look at Ahon shaking his head. He's going to give him some trouble out there. I'll guarantee you there's only three fumbles on that one kickoff. All right, 20 to 7. The misconversion or black conversion off this man, Chester Markle, could be a consideration later in the game. 707 remaining in the first half. Ball just inside the 17-yard line. Grogan puts Harold Jackson right. The setbacks, Calhoun, 44. Cunningham, 39. This is Calhoun. And Calhoun moons ahead to the 20-yard line for a gain of three. It'll be second and seven. Now let's see if Grogan clams up, if he becomes afraid to throw, Don, and keeps the ball on the ground. Well, I don't think he will. I don't think he'd be afraid to throw. I, I, I really do think they came in, obviously, to throw against his team, and we pointed out they've got some weaknesses back in there. 
But uh, for some reason, maybe he tried to do too much of it too quick. If he can get himself settled down a little bit with the rest of it, he'll pick it back up. Hit his first four passes in a row. On second and six. And Cunningham gets out of the 25. Short of a first down, it'll be third down and two. This is a team with the capacity to really chew up yards. They demolished the Jets 56 to three. Beat a fine San Diego team. Tough game, 27-21. Here's Timmy Fox who blocked the extra point. Number 48. The three tight ends are in. Actually, Pete Brock, who wears number 58, he has to report to the officials when he comes in. He's in there with Hasselbeck and Francis. Calhoun gets the call. Calhoun gets the first down after the 33-yard line. Now, there you get the picture. Mistakes, mistakes, mistakes. On that last play, Frank told you there were three tight ends in there. And you saw 58, Brock, in motion to his left. And that's the play they used to defeat San Diego. You normally expect run when you've got the three tight ends in there. But on the winning play against San Diego, Francis executed what was apparently a beautiful run block and then quickly went out to his appointed spot, suckered the defense, was all alone to take a touchdown pass. First and 10, Calhoun following Cunningham. And down goes Calhoun. It's Wingo over there defensively for Green Bay, the first Packer in on the stop. And we'd like to quickly remind you that tomorrow, 12 o'clock noon Eastern time, ABC will be carrying the address of Pope John Paul II to the UN. And how this man's travels has impacted upon the world. Seeing the satellite films from Ireland, of course, his arrival today in Boston. That speech at 12 o'clock Eastern time to the UN on ABC. 425, the clock is moving, remaining in the first half. Second down and eight for New England. They're down 20 to 7. Grogan, and he's caught from behind right. Robert Barber. Well, I got it's about three. It'll be third down and three. I gotta tell you, Barber gets his shot at playing because Ezra Johnson, the great pass rusher and stabilizer of the Green Bay defense, is out, injured. That lad is from Grambling College, which you've heard about before, and that was tremendous pursuit for a man his size. It was good secondary coverage, too. They brought both the outside cornerbacks up to try to cover the short zones. The safeties go back to cover the deep zones. Linebackers drop. They had uh, Francis well covered that time. He didn't have anybody open, and it was good pursuit. You're right. Ball marked at the 34, so it's actually third down four. Rogan in trouble. But if only a quarterback like Grogan can do, he turns it into an empty gain. I think he's short. No, he gets the first down. Now, again, Rich Wing goes all over the field. T told you to watch that kid. He's been the talk of the camp. Hey, he came in when Michael Hunt was injured, jammed his neck. Rich Wingo came in and replaced Michael Hunt, and Michael Hunt cannot get back in there, middle linebacker, this seventh-round pick out of Alabama. When the big bad trains him, he trains. They train. Groglin got the first down. Ball at the 38. He goes to the air again on first. Look at got a man open. It's oh, down. that's a play. Russ Francis gets the first down. Down close to the 32-yard line of Green Bay. He's popped hard by Mike McCoy, but the big one holds on. Now, the extra dimension of Grogan, Don. He does have the move. You'll see right there, uh, he almost was trapped again. Coming up, Francis made a good adjustment, too. It's what you really like to see the receivers do. When they come out, they see that whatever route you call is not open. He sees the quarterback in trouble. You go to an open spot. And a difficult pass executed, running to the left by the right-handed Grogan. Gets to England, a first down for 32. Grogan, everyone in the pattern. Yeah. This time he's going to go down. He made a mistake there. Barber's there, but the first man is Earl Edwards, who was just brought in, activated today. Had a problem with Cleveland a year ago. He's just been sitting around waiting for a phone call, and he got it with all the injuries to Green Bay. Well, I tell you, Earl Edwards is a pretty confident fellow and pretty outspoken. We got the two-minute warning coming up. 
Edwards came in here and he said, you watch my smoke. I'm what Green Bay needed. <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment. Look at them. They're beautiful children. It's hard to believe that they all have juvenile arthritis. They're part of the 31 million people who are victims of arthritis in our country. Hi, I'm Bill Lankaitis of the New England Patriots. I've seen my mother suffer with arthritis through the pain and operations. That's why I do volunteer work for the Arthritis Foundation here in New England. They receive funding from the United Way, and volunteers like myself make it possible for this agency to fight this disease. These are my daughters, Chrissy and Lori. They're healthy. They don't have arthritis, so I'm blessed. Each time I volunteer, I feel that I'm helping some child that isn't so lucky. You can help, too, by supporting your United Way and by being a volunteer. United Way works. Thanks to you, it works for all of us. The United Way. Right? The preceding announcement was brought to you by Dr. William Lenkaitis, the center for New England, as a public service, also by the National Football League. The sack by Edwards. Three-yard loss, second down 13 for New England. The ball at the 35-yard line of the Green Bay Packers, and the Patriots have three timeouts. Green Bay has one. Two minutes remaining in the first half. Green Bay 20, New England 7. Calhoun, inside handoff, finds an opening. Good time to have that call. It looked like New England had gone into a blitz. They popped it, and Calhoun moves inside the 20. They were moving something around in there. They had Edwards look like a meat rank on the nose. The two uh, outside cornerbacks again were rolling up, and that was a good play. Second down in a long situation. Kind of a little cross block in there. They found a big hole. That's good block. In a 30 left. Downing down. Jackson goes out to the right. Out to the left to Stanley Morgan. Rogan. For Calhoun, incomplete. Testing out there defensively for Green Bay, number 53, Mike Douglas. Clock stop, 121. That's a man who never played professional football. As Frank told you, he coached at North Dakota State. Had Steve Nelson there. Was a member of the Chuck Fairbanks staff. Tremendously popular man with his players. Second down, passing down, in all probability for Grogan. The two outside receivers, Harold Jackson and Stanley Morgan, came in tonight. 15 receptions between them, but they had six touchdowns and those six receptions, or 15 receptions. That'll make a cornerback shake a little bit. Grogan, a lot of running room. He sure does. My God. Down close to the six-yard line is Grogan, and you'll see a quick New England timeout because he could not get out of bounds. Russ Francis gives us the indication. The clock has 106. Highlights, of course, coming up at halftime, and boy, there is some. Looks like Oakland is back, Howard, for one. Well, right now, I want to tell you about the Oakland Raiders, whom you'll be seeing against Miami next Monday night. Yesterday, at the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum, it was against Denver. First quarter, nothing, nothing. Raider ball, second and eight at the Bronco 28. Kenny Stabler with the hot hand back. Hitting number 87, Dave Casper. Dave's first touchdown of the year. That made it seven to nothing. Fourth quarter action, 14-3 Oakland. Raiders ball, first and 10 at the 50. Stabler. Hitting the speedster, Cliff Branch, for 45 yards to the Bronco 5. That set up an Oakland field goal, 17-3. Fourth quarter, 17-3. First and 10, Denver 45. Ken Stabler to Dave Casper and a brilliant catch. And the Raiders rebounded to just crash Denver 27-3. Repeat, next Monday night, the Miami Dolphins against the Oakland Raiders. Be with us. Miami, four and one. Don Shula's got it all back together once again down there. He did until yesterday. <laughs> the big zonk running. Greasy coming back yesterday. First and goal. The ball inside the seven-yard line. Brogan. Francis. Touchdown. Oh, boy. Douglas trying to stay with him. He could not 
handle the big man. There's no way you can overextol the assets of this man, Russ Francis. He uses those arms and swats them away like flies. He is the practically all-world tight end. What an athlete. He had an option to run or throw. Not an unusual play down there in that situation. But you're right, Mike Douglas, the linebacker, bumped Francis the line of scrimmage, bounced off a little too far, never could catch up with him. Well, he did. He pounded Douglas backwards, and Douglas could not get back to defend him. Here's John Smith now for the conversion. Keep in mind, Chester Markle's third conversion tonight, after a couple of near misses, the third one was blocked. John Smith, who missed much of last year with a damaged thigh. Back in form, gets it up. And New England, with 101, has shortened the lead of the Green Bay Packers to 2014. There was another major occurrence yesterday. It happened at the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan, Minnesota, Detroit. It was the first play of the second quarter. And watch this closely. Comlo of Delaware, the rookie, the ninth round draft choice, back to pass. The ball picked off by the elder statesman, Paul Krause, number 22. The pass had been intended for Gene Washington. This was the 79th career interception. It tied him with Emlyn Tunnell. <laughs> and his last interception had been as long ago as November 27, 1977. <laughs> A.P. Ski, Koselchik, Giffa, Giffardowski, and Dandy Donowitz. <laughs> well, that's all right. <laughs> Our congratulations to Paul Krause. Oh, yeah. A long and distinguished career. Could be one that's going to hang there for a long time. No one is even close to acting today. Smith bobbles it along the ground. Steve Odom wrestles with it at the nine, comes up with it. And Odom down at the 20-yard line. Hustling down there. Don Hasselbeck. Comes in on short yarding situations, and we see a lot of him on special teams. And New England, as we thought, with their strength, has come back. So what we've got is a beautiful football game. You know, that 20, Pats 14. That drive could have been stopped back up around the 30-yard line on the other end of the field had not Grogan made that first down. He made right the last, the last run. When he ran out, he made it by about a foot on his own effort. So we got to give him some good credit there. He also picked up a big first down here close to the goal line. Green Bay has one timeout. So I think we'll see it on the ground. Well, we won't. Got him wide open. This is Thompson. Andre Thompson. Out of bounds at the 41. Stops the clock with 45 seconds. They make Claiborne over there defensively for New England. They want field goal position, of course. Because that blocked field goal against, uh, that blocked extra point against Markle could cost them heavily. I think you're right, Frank. I don't think uh, the New England guys expected them to come out passing either. I think they thought they might try to run it on the end over halftime. Bart is really not playing a close to the best tonight, even with all those injuries. He has tried a lot of things. A long lateral with a pass following that. Now trying to move the ball. What he doesn't want, though, is a turnover and have New England, with timeouts remaining, get their own field goal. Whitehurst. And it's Prentice McCray. And he went to the turf. But New England has the football. 37 seconds on the clock. And the Patriots have a couple of timeouts. Quick is winding down now to the end of the half. And we'd like to repeat what we talked about last Friday night in Las Vegas. Last week, a momentous week in sports because the Olympics are coming back to the United States, the Summer Olympics, in 1984. The first time since, you'll remember, back in 1932. It'll be the same place, basically, the centerpiece, the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. And ABC is very proud to announce that we'll be carrying the 23rd Olympiad from Los Angeles. First and 10, New England. Grogan on a bootleg, and he's got an open field with a good block. <laughs> he's fun to watch. He has fun to run. Oh, I get a kick out of him. I think he's fun. <laughs> Grogan out of bounds. Up around the 34-yard line. Kills the clock with 32 seconds. So, 
pretty good way, Frank, to kind of assure you're not going to really mess it up. You get out on the outside with that quarterback, you got a lead blocker. So he's going to either run out of bounds early or run out of bounds late. He ran out of bounds in time to get him a first down. There's John Hanna out in front of him. He was naked except for John Hanna. On first down, draw play. Calhoun, down goes Calhoun. Green Bay thinking pass. Calhoun gets a couple, however. Good alert defensive play by Gary Weaver. I think that was the same play they tried and were sex successful on earlier when they picked up the big second and long and they got a first down of it and they made the drive. Broken calls timeout, moves over to talk with Ron Earhart. One timeout remaining for New England. We're going to remind you again, college football this Saturday, Michigan, Michigan State. They get it on once again, the traditional rivalry. So Big Ten champions a year ago, each with one loss this year. Both losses to Notre Dame. 1984, Frank. I wonder if they'll have you on the oars. <laughs> but it'll be good to be back. The 19th Olympiad, Mexico City. The 20th Olympiad, Munich West Germany. The 21st Olympiad, Montreal, Canada. And so the Summer Olympics will be back with the veterans of ABC. Lake Placid coming up in February of That's next year. True. Comes out of the huddle. 21 seconds remaining in the half. New England has one timeout. Packers leading 2014. The ball at the 37 yard line of New England. Screen. Sam Cunningham. Wingo missed him. Boy, I'll tell you what a guard that John Hanna is. He looked over his shoulder, saw that he could go downfield instead of fanning back for Cunningham. Kind of directed traffic and. Cunningham got another seven or eight yards out of it, and now they are threatening with nine seconds remaining. Ball marked at about the 42-yard line, 43-yard line. Well, they got from no timeouts. Well set up play. You'll see Grogan looking to the right all the time. There's a little fake flip out to that side from the screen, and you're right. What 73? There's Hannah. Wingo misses him right there. Came in, didn't quite catch up. This kid has been all over the field. Don mentioned that he's a rookie and that there can be some lateness sometimes in recognition. But boy, what speed, what effort, and instinct. It was a good decision by Hannah, too. You saw him look back and he says, well, I can't do any good there, but I can't downfield, and he did. And another six or seven yards. Situation now for Grogan, who visited with Ron Earhart. Nine seconds on the clock. He cannot stop it again himself. They're working against a strong wind, Frank. Steve has to pick up quickly about 20 yards for Smith to be within his kicking range. And still save enough of that clock for the field goal attempt. Yeah. Yeah. No timeouts left. No timeouts. Green Bay, of course, knows that New England's going to have to attempt. Well, they might try and go with the screen out there, no? Now well, they're going to throw it up and hope. They're going to hope for a penalty. <laughs> Incomplete. The time has expired, at least on the scoreboard, and that's the end of the first half. And we hope you've enjoyed it. Exciting football from Green Bay. Stay tuned now. Halftime highlights coming your way in just a moment. When an ordinary air filter gets really dirty, it can eat gas and kill your acceleration. Now, this is the Fram Extra Life. It's got a special outer filter which helps keep the inner filter clean, which means that the Fram lasts 50% longer than our ordinary single filter. 50% longer. Why not change your old filter for a new Fram Extra Life? Doesn't cost any more, but it can save a lot later. Fram and Autolite are Bendix companies. Buick introduces the 1980s Century Sedan, our little limousine, a brand new Century filled with room, comfort, and elegance, powered by a responsive and efficient 3.8 liter V6 engine. A century which by all appearances looks as though it should cost a small fortune, but which in truth does not. For two folks. Home, Jimmy. Right, Mom. Buick's new century sedan, our little limousine. Just the unhappy days, Mom becomes a jailbird. We want to go home. Then, on Angie. I'm in love with my sister's husband. Boy, Ben. And on Three's Company, it's Strip Poker and Jack gets the royal blush. Then Louie makes his move for Elaine on Taxi. Tomorrow.
Good evening on TV 11's Late News. After the football game, we'll go live to Lambeau Field to get some comments from the fans. Join us tonight about 11.30. Looking for a good job that pays well for work well done? Kohler Company, a major manufacturer of plumbing products, needs good people to work evening and night shifts. Kohler, a good place to work and a good place to live. If you're looking for a job with stability and good wages, call Kohler Company between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. weekdays at area code 414-457-4441. That's Kohler Company, area code 414-457-4441. Kohler Company, an equal opportunity employer. Raise the crowd, 6.30 weekdays on TV 11. This February, the 1980 Winter Olympics, exclusively on ABC. The men's downhill is the fastest, most dangerous alpine skiing event. Innsbruck, 76. Franz Plummer shattered the Olympic course in a death-defying run. This is the downhill course in Lake Placid. Top challengers will be Switzerland's Peter Mueller, Austria's Peter Bernsberger, and Ken Reed of Canada. Who will emerge as the downhill king? Just one of the dramas when the world comes to America for the 1980 Winter Olympics. We're back live at Lambeau Field in Green Bay. There's the halftime score. The pack ahead by six. Today at halftime, we're going to bring you highlights of the key games that took place yesterday, plus a special tribute to the late Vincent D. Lombardi and the Green Bay Packers. Our halftime speeches are being brought to you by Metropolitan. Metropolitan really stands by you with insurance for your life, health, auto, home, and retirement. Now let's turn our attention to yesterday's NFL highlights featuring the unbeatens as they went into the day's action. Unbeaten Miami against the Jets at Shea Stadium. First quarter, Miami ball, fourth and eight at their own 15. Back to punt, and watch, 26, Donald Dykes, the rookie defensive back, blocks it. The ball picked up by Johnny Lynn, the other rookie defensive back. Seven to nothing, Jets in the third quarter. The Jets, who were amazing yesterday, 20 to 10 over Miami. Miami's ball, first and 10 at the 50. The pass from Greasy, intended for Jimmy Cephalo, but that's number 40, Bobby Jackson. Look at him go. 58 yards, the score, and the Jets at 26 to 10. In the fourth quarter, it was 26 to 20, the Jets. Miami rallying. Richard Todd deep to Wesley Walker, the speedster from California. 71 yards, touchdown. The Jets won it 33 to 27. Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Injury riddled Pittsburgh against the Eagles playing without Bill Berge. Out for the year. Second quarter action. 7-0 Steelers. The Eagles ball. Second and 10 at their own 40. Jaworski back to the tight end. Keith Brepley. He had a fine day as the graphic showed you. This for a 30-yard gain to the steal at 30. Then again right there. And it was a great play for 27 yards to the steal at three-yard line. Three plays later, third and one. Leroy Harris obtained from Miami. In for the touchdown, tied the game at seven. We move ahead to third quarter action. The Eagles now leading 10 to seven. Pittsburgh ball, second and 10, their own 15. Terry Bradshaw intercepted by 95. Johnny Bunting, he returned it to the Steeler two-yard line. That set up a Will Montgomery one-yard touchdown, and the happiness is supreme. The Eagles won it 17-14. Cleveland at Houston. Cleveland coming down from cloud nine after their tremendous victory over Dallas last Monday night. Second quarter, 10-3 Houston. Houston ball, third and three. The Browns, 19. 34, Earl Campbell sweeping left. 17 yards down to the Cleveland two. That young man is going to be, before his race is run, one of the greatest runners of all time. This was the next play. And there goes Earl Campbell, running right this time. In for the touchdown that made it 17-3 Houston in the second quarter with the score still 17 to 3 houston cleveland's ball first and 10 their own 26 brian sight throws it's intended for 85 dave logan but picked off by 33 jc wilson all the way downfield 34 yards the score houston 24 cleveland three and the oilers went on to win it 31 to 10 cleveland no longer unbeaten 
at Soldier Field in Chicago. Tampa Bay going into the game unbeaten. Action in the second quarter. Tampa Bay ball. First and ten at the Tampa Bay 39. There goes the brilliant rookie Jerry Eckwood from Arkansas. He runs right all the way downfield. 61 yards. The longest run in Buck history. And that put Tampa Bay ahead 7 to nothing in the fourth quarter. Leading 10 to 6 was Tampa Bay. Chicago ball, first and 10, their own 35. Vince Evans, watch this, sets up a screen left. And there it is to the great one, Walla Payton, number 34. And he pours it on. Give him an inch, he can take a mile. Watch this. Now he'll get down to the five. And look at him leap in. Touchdown. The Bears moved ahead 13 to 10. But this Tampa Bay Buccaneer team, coached by John McKay, means business this year. Here's Doug Williams. Bucks ball, third and two, the Bears eight. He throws it to number 81. That'll be Isaac Hagan. In for the touchdown. The Bucks, the only unbeaten team in the league. Fall is beginning to give way to winter in Green Bay. A little early, the temperature beginning to drop. It was raining during the course of the day as we look at the scoring sequence that took place in the first half the Green Bay Packers with a lot of injuries coming into tonight's game a very youthful bunch on the field befuddling the New England Patriots the New England Patriots three and one in their young season the Green Bay Packers one and three in their young season Chester Markle will kick off will be kicking with the wind and deep will be Alan Clark a rookie 10th round pick out of northern Arizona 5'10 186 pounder Breezy night. Temperature is expected to drop into the 30s later tonight. Second half is underway. Marco adds more excitement. This is Don Westbrook who drops the ball and comes back and gets it. And he has pounded down around the 15-yard line. Number 82 was Paul Kaufman down there. Bobbled the ball, picked it up, and by that time, Kaufman was all over him. And I want to ask, do you think he's kicking off that way on purpose? Maybe they've got, they know something we don't know. Maybe there's a twist. That well, there might be. Yeah, he, maybe he's trying to kick it away from somebody. I really doubt it. Well, it was just the fault. <laughs> I thought I'd just throw that it out. Certainly effective. First and 10, New England, their own 15-yard line. The quarterback, Steve Grogan. Andy Johnson was hurt in the first quarter. He was the other starting setback along with Sam Cunningham. Cunningham is in there, number 39, and Don Calhoun, number 44. Wide receiver, 29. Earl Jackson, Stanley Morgan, 86. The tight end, Russ Francis, 81. This is Calhoun on first down. Runs into a fired-up Packer defense. He gets a couple. It'll be second down and eight. There is Guy High Club. You can see it the way they hit on the kickoff. Defensively for Green Bay, it'll be Barber, number 70. Charles Johnson, the rookie for Maryland, number 99. Number 75, Carl Barzaloskis, number 75. And Mike Butler, number 77. Building <laughs> <laughs> run, but Green Bay leads in the score. Ball at the 17, and Grogan wants the football change, perhaps. Some stick em, as they say in the trade, might have come off the hands of Calhoun on the ball, and Dr. Bill Glenkaitis, the center for New England, would have picked that up and said, I want to change. Second and eight. Cunningham, single setback. Calhoun, bottom of the screen, the wing back. Screen, he goes to Cunningham. Good move. Cunningham <laughs> moves to the inside. Not a block by John Hanna again, or not a block. He just used Hanna as a screen, cut to the inside, got the first down, out to the 27-yard line. We caught a look at Green Bay's three-man front that time. They've been playing a four-man front most of the night that time, and I guess a passing down. They had the three men in, an extra back out. That screen really did set up well, and again, they did run right behind Hanna. That's a nice place to be. That's comfortable. Again, Ezra Johnson, the... Best pass rusher for Green Bay, not being able to play tonight as Green Bay again lines up in their 3-4 defense. On first down, Cunningham gets the call, dances along the line of scrimmage, gets out over the 30, close to the 31 for a gain of about three. It'll be second down and seven. Word is that Steve
Steve Nelson, who suffered a concussion, was carried from the field in a stretcher, has been taken to the hospital. The word that we have received is he appears to be coming out of it. Uh, the label that was placed on the injury, a severe concussion to Steve Nelson. Second down, seven. 20 to 14, the Cockers over the Patriots. Wow, Rogan sacked. And that's getting in there, Robert, Robert Barber. The youngster from Grambling. Not all that young. He came up with the Steelers in second round draft pick. Back in 76. Where do they all come from? They're sending some linebackers, and Barber gets away from up at the line. That was uh, Dwight Wheeler blocking on him. He slid in past Dwight, came back, and they welcomed him. Had pretty good coverage downfield, too, considering how much pressure they put on Grogan. I got to tell you, Frank, to me, he's very <laughs> well, To me, he's young. I meant he was picked by the Steelers. <laughs> uh, second round, and he went into the WFL. Played there, and then came to the pack in 76. Third down, 15. Packers fired up. Grogan oh overthrows and is picked off as Mike McCoy. He's went out of bounds, but Green Bay has come up with another turnover. They'll have the ball at the 38-yard line. Pass overthrown by Grogan to Russ Francis. So again, a mistake by New England. That's what's plagued them all night. Now as you watch Steve in the replay, done when you take off. Well, is there not much to say, Howard? He just, uh, he overthrew him. Francis was open out there, and he missed him about three yards. McCoy was playing deep again on the sideline, picked it up, and then they're right, right there going. They got this thing and a win to their back. Whitehurst, 17, the quarterback. Marty Smith, 33. One set back with Turdell Middleton, 34. Play action by Whitehurst. Oh, and he wants it quick. He fires over the middle. It's complete to Lofton. Oh, uh, that was... Uh, what a night. You know, he had good time. Got good protection that time. Stayed in his pocket. Waited for Lofton to open up over the middle. There's always a hole down in there. You'll see that middle zone we keep talking about a lot. Lofton's going to come down, go down about 12, 15 yards, come back across the middle. He's a little bit too deep for the linebackers. Cut back over in the middle. You see a linebacker there. The ball was laid in perfectly. The man who made it all possible, Mike McCoy, coming up with a key interception. Lofton moves the Packers to the 17-yard line of New England. Barty Smith in motion, the quick toss, Turdell Middleton. Good block right side, and Middleton is inside the 10-yard line to the 8. That man is having a tremendous football game. Hey, and Barty Smith made a heck of a ball, oh, did he? He really did. When I said at the beginning of the telecast, no, I didn't, because we didn't have time to do what we were going to do. I was going to describe Whitehurst as an extension of Bart Starr. Maybe I did get it in on the tee. Well, you mentioned it to me. I remember it. Uh, that was a couple of good blocks to the outside. Put it over to the outside. Tim Fox there on it. They got a big first down. He's second, second and short. Oh, they don't have a first down. They do have a first down. They now they have a first down. First and goal inside the five-yard line. Barty Smith. 6'4", 230-pounder. What are you saying, Howard? I was saying that he is running this game Bart Starr's way. Frank and I were talking with one of the Packer officials before the game, just moments before. He was talking about how Bert is calling his own signals and how much he's growing in confidence and poise. Isn't that right? Well, he's not calling his own signals. They're sending him in. He by. said he lets them in sometimes. Well, I think so. What you, well, he can change it off anytime he wants. He can overrule the call that comes in. First and goal. Whitehurst, he can run it in. He did. Easily. How do you like that? I like it. Mike McCoy set it off. As earlier in the first half, Johnny Gray set off a Green Bay touchdown with an interception. Well, then they got it going. The only thing I can think of they've done wrong so far is miss that extra point. It may come back. Bert Whitehurst of Furman. Watch him. We saw him in his first start for Green Bay in a Monday night game against Washington. Green Bay lost then 10 to 9. Right now, he's got the pack ahead 26-14 over one of the powerhouse teams of the league. Chester Markle. This time he gets it up. He gets it through. And the pack is out in front of the New England Patriots 27 to 14. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi, Bob. How are you? 
Gentlemen, gentlemen, tonight we're brought together here by two things we all love. Good food and light beer from Miller. Of course, a sellout every year since 1948. Our producer Dennis Lewin says, "No problem, Michigan State all the way." The alumnus, of course. All right, the kids of Green Bay are testing the New England Patriots. Markle tries to apparently what he might be trying to do, Don, is to keep it away from Alan Clark. I think he is. I really think, and I know he can kick better than he's been kicking. He's been kicking those little chip shots out there. That time he just drilled it over, but he does have the wind to his back, and they've been they started moving up a little bit. So he now got him on the 20-yard line again. And for New England, the test of a really solid team, a championship team. They're down 27-14. They are an explosive team. Did you recall earlier? They beat the Jets 56 to 3. Grogan, five touchdown passes in that one. They can really explode. They have a lot of time. 9.46 remaining in the third quarter. And they have all the weapons. But they are being fought to a standstill tonight by a fired up bunch of Packers. Screen, Cunningham. Hand is out front. And Cunningham runs into Mike Douglas. Down he goes after a gain of nine. It'll be second to one. Charlie yeah, Johnson wait. was helping over there, the rookie defensive tackle for Green Bay. Sam was looking one way, got hit the other. I watched Sam. I wonder who taught whom. He was Lynn Swan's roommate at USC. Lynn Cottis got a good block that time on that rookie middle linebacker we've been talking about, Wingo. And he may have hurt a leg a little bit. I saw him get up and limp off. We'll keep an eye on him and see if he can still move. Second and short. Cunningham gets the call. Doesn't like it inside. Steps to the outside. Gets the first down at the 32-yard line. This is, I'm sure, what Ron Earhart has talked to Steve Grogan about. Take him back out there. Get him settled down. We can do it. We've got all the weapons. Grogan, of course, this year calling his plays for the first time. It's been an exasperating night for Grogan. It's been wonderful running the football, erratic passing. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Calhoun. Wing reverse and Calhoun out of the 35 to the 36. That big Sam Adams out there in front of it, but they closed on that one pretty slick. They didn't get much out of it. Looked like it was going to be a pretty good game there for a while, and Calhoun may be hurt. Calhoun is shaking up. Andy Johnson is already out of the game. Calhoun grabbing his cap. Mike Douglas is over there defensively for Green Bay. And yeah, I think Calhoun is going to depart. This is all that Ron Earhart needs. Johnson out. The knee hurt. Field is a little wet. Now that could be a muscle cramp. I just can't say. But the field is a little wet. It was raining. And they took the tarp off, drizzling, if you will. You know, it was kind of interesting because we stayed in the hotel where the Patriots were staying, and several of the guys were concerned about the sudden dip in the weather, but they're used to cold weather. I just don't think they're ready to go do it right now. They have not had any real cold weather so far this year, but I heard four or five of them say, gosh, I hope it doesn't get too cold tonight. And I believe you're right, Frank. It looks like that is cramped. You get a soft feel like this, you can come up with muscle cramps quite quickly. We'll check on them later. Well, they're healthy little girls. From Green Bay. Football crazy town. It really is. I when you come into the airport, you know they don't 
wait long to let you know that you're in Packer land. That's the big sign of the airport. Welcome to the Green Bay, home of the Green Bay Packer. It, this, this club is owned, isn't it, by the members of this city? Well, it's owned, really, by owners all over the state. Yeah. From Ashland to Sheboygan, from Oshkosh to Madison, <laughs> you will find owners of the Green Bay back and spots yeah. in between. Purely non-profit corporation it is. <laughs> Alan Clark is in there. You see him on special teams running back the kickoffs. He's 5'10", 186-pound rookie out of northern Arizona. Calhoun walked off like he might be able to come back. Rogan on second down and eight. Francis, Francis has open. the first down and more. Down close to the 45-yard line is Russ Francis. It's really a privilege to watch that man play. I think that's a, I really love this offensive play. It's a slight roll to the left. You're going to get a lot of movement out of the linebackers moving this way. He stops, turns back. It gives Francis just a little bit more room to work there in the middle. He was wide open. They don't bother him too much <laughs> off the line. <laughs> that arm goes out, rushes him off. Green Bay staying in the 3-4. Robert Barber, Charles Johnson, Carl Barzaluskas. That's your down three, men. Oh, Barzo. An unusual defense for the Packers. Forced into it because of injuries. On first and ten. Cunningham. And New England beginning to exploit that defense that the Packers cannot be used to play. Cunningham to the 39-yard line. Gain of six. It'll be second and four. Russell yep. Krebs for Calhoun. He will return. Hawkins, we get word. Rib injury, nothing serious. He went to the hospital. Andy Johnson, still no word on whether or not he suffered gauntlet damage. 6.55 on the clock remaining in the third quarter. It's the Packers 27, the Patriots 14. The ball at the 39-yard line of Green Bay. New England began this drive with their 20. Grogan, oh, sacked. Barber Robert there, Barber, again. also hustling in there was Mike, Mike Butler. Butler. Butler, normally with Ezra Johnson, one of the two key pass rushers. Butler made Grogan pull up, and Barber was there for the sack. No one went with that little play fake that they had. You'll see if they get him high and get him low. Could have been a fumble right there. Barber, again, came in from the inside. Having a rather good evening, isn't he? Yes, he is. They keep popping up with the big play, the interception. Mike McCoy. Here in the second half, key interception, Johnny Gray in the first half, both leading the scores. And now New England back into a third and 12, the ball at the 46-yard line of Green Bay. And evidence of New England mistakes. Safety blitz that time, they really coming at him. And Earl this Edwards was, was there also. This is kind of what we expected off of this uh, three-man front, according to the information we got from the coaches. Luke again is in there. Mike Douglas and Steve Luke all over Grogan. A lot of heroes developing as you watch again. See the three-man butt. That's Jim Grano. And there is Steve Luke. What a hitter. First punt of the night for New England. It's Eddie Hare. To Steve Odom. And Odom hustles and scrambles out to close to the 30-yard line. Pete Brock down there defensively for New England. Timeout, and we'll be back in a moment. This is the 1980 Buick Skylark. I like the room for five, although I don't always carry that many. I like the front wheel drive, too, uh, even though it doesn't rain or snow that much around here. And the good mileage is certainly appreciated, especially right now. But you know what really makes a Skylark just perfect for me? I've got one. Buick Skylark. It just might be the perfect car for you. Now there's a way to type that gets your paperwork done right and done faster. No problem typing from Lanier. You want your work back error-free? No problem. Corrections are made here instead of on paper. Want to move a paragraph? No problem. Add or delete a sentence? No problem. Want your typing back sooner? No problem. Electronic typing from Lanier. Call your local Lanier office. Tuesday, Max Career is on the line. I'm being sued for malpractice. The Lazarus Syndrome. Monday Night Football. We got a little bit late start tonight because of the presidential address. Hope you're enjoying the football game. A scrambling, fighting bunch of Green Bay Packers, a bunch of kids, really, if you will. And they have a 
27-14 lead over the New England Patriots. First and 10. In the 29-yard line, screen goes out to Thompson. And Thompson is stacked up. Mike Hayes moving up briskly from his cornerback position. Dumps Thompson back at the 25-yard line. Didn't have much room out there. The ball was thrown a little bit high. That takes off quite a bit on the timing. Interesting football game. Energy, Mr. Lombardi said, when you looked at him from the television film Run to Daylight, the documentary of 1964. The energy edges with Green Bay thus far. Second down, 13. Quick toss, Turdell Middleton. Nifty little move. He avoids one tackler, but runs right into Ray Kostick. That play was pretty well set up. It's one of those things I'd come back and run again because he had two blockers on two defensive guys. It didn't work that way. A quick huddle. What are they going to do? Let's see here. No. Oh. Third down. Call it 12. Whitehurst. That's in there. And he has Lofton once again. Lofton makes the reception at the 44. First down, Green Bay. And we talked about Lofton's speed. He was an NCAA long jump champion as a collegian. Had the best jump in the world, as a matter of fact, at 27 feet. Well, he had great protection. He pumped once, then threw. That was a nice throw, too. Lofton, I guess, is utilizing speed to get Claiborne to come back to the outside. That's that throw back the out, uh, over that sideline. I've come back. Good, good throw by Whitehurst. Good move by Lofton. Good timing between them. Three receptions, 68 yards. Walter Tullis in now. Lofton gets a breather. First and 10. Or Andre Thompson comes out. Here comes Middleton. That's a running room. Wow. Middleton powers to midfield for a gain of about seven yards. Up into there by Claiborne and hit hard, but Middleton pops up. He has a way of picking up that extra yard, yard and a half, sometimes even two upon being hit. That's energy. Second down, a long three. The ball just into New England territory. Green Bay now also using time on the clock. 4.25 remaining in the third quarter. Noisy, partisan group. Whitehurst wants them to quiet down. Hand off goes to Barty Smith, and Smith is backed up. It'll be third down and two. Smith just inside the 49-yard line. That is the stop on Barty Smith. Getting down to four minutes left in the third quarter. Well, big play for Green Bay right now. They can keep this drive alive. If they could get in and get rid of the bonus put on them by a misconversion, it would help considerably. Third and a long two. Cordell Middleton. He doesn't get it. Piled up there by the middle of the New England defense, and Green Bay will have to consider going for it. I don't believe they will. Well, Bart Starr is thinking it over. I, I think it'd be a mistake. Well, all right, with a 27-14 lead, Green Bay with a fourth and a good yard to go. Well, Frank, you look at it another way. He's one in three. That's the point. And this uh, crowd here in Green Bay, they love him, but they, if, you, if you can't win, at least show me something different. Fourth oh, and no. one. Uh, the third timeout. Now you know it's been called by Green Bay, unnecessarily so. And Whitehurst moves over to talk with Bart Starr. We'll be back in a moment. A good quarterback does his homework on and off the field. That's probably why the three of us are all drinking light beer from Miller. See, light's got a third less calories than the regular beer, and it's less filling. Plus, it tastes great. And you know it's important to have a command of facts like that. It's mental discipline, really. You're darn right. Because if you know every position, Every option, every formation, you'll never get your signals crossed. Hey, that's my beer, Terry. Oh, no, this is yeah, no, wait, well, this is this one. Is. No, wait a minute. minute. What's that? Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. I feel my label. I love football and I love relaxing. Cause for me, relaxing always includes skull. The smokeless tobacco. Just a pinch between my cheek and gum gives me great tobacco taste without lighting up. Got the sea, the breeze. Got my skull. Nothing's going to make me move. Think I'll play some touch. 
Francisco, old brother. Try going smokeless. A pinch is all it takes. The most important event in baseball, beginning Tuesday night, October 9th, live at 8 Eastern, the World Series on ABC. Something you don't see too often, he called timeout. Here may be one of the reasons, because written on his wrist, you'll see he has a list of his automatics and switch-offs. He says, wait a minute, that one ain't there. Now, I'm going to go call up and talk to the coach. <laughs> what they do is Bart calls the play, and then Zeke Gorkowski, Zeke Gorkowski, now there's a guy for you, man. He's right there. Now. He may be calling the plays. Who knows? I know they do it with hand Do you wiggles. remember a man named Matties? Yes, I do. Number 41. Key down for Green Bay. Fourth, a long yard to go. The ball inside the 48-yard line, and they're going to go with a 27-14 lead. I think they lost something by calling that timeout. We'll see here in a minute. Not wide. They didn't make they it. They did not make it. I even wonder what kind of call that is to go to the outside. Go outside in a situation like that. Well, He's going to go to the shortest point. We sure got something to pick on him about now, haven't we? We sure do. Now, by golly, he shouldn't have done that. And what a momentum swing you can have with that. New England is going to have first down the ball at their own 47-yard line. And we'll be returning to Green Bay in just a moment. At the 1904 World's Fair, Harvey Firestone received a gold medal for his tires. But to Harvey, the real proof that he was building a good tire was people were buying it. Just about every car on the fairground was riding on Firestone. Today, the Firestone 721 is being proved the same way. American drivers have bought over 20 million 721s. Now, Harvey always said, give people a good product, and they'll buy it. When choosing between the phone and a business letter, remember, the letter is loaded with hidden costs. I see you. There's dictating time. Typing time, filing costs, materials, even mailing costs. Sorting, sealing, stamping, and postage. To reduce those costs, don't reach for a stamp. Reach for the telephone. The phone's a better buy than the business letter. On ABC's Wide World of Sports, another look at special dazzling performances by world champions and other top international stars, Saturday. Plus, you'll be seeing these events and another look at Sugar Ray's stunning victory on the same night of the Home Shavers fight. <laughs> Green Bay fails on fourth down. New England has the football, their own 47-yard line. Don Calhoun back in the lineup, number 44. Remember, he left with the cramps. He's back. 250 remaining in the third quarter. Calhoun gets the call, finds a big opening. Calhoun down to the 46-yard line of Green Bay. There was no looking at the cup then. Rogan does not wear it. I mentioned Matty, Tom Matty earlier, number 41, as Don remembered. You'll remember when he was rushed into the breach suddenly as a quarterback for Baltimore with plays written on the cup. I remember it well. Gain of seven by Calhoun, second down and three. Cunningham gets the call, finds an opening, shakes the tackle, gets the first down at the 40-yard line. Well, they were screaming for Bart to go for it. After that timeout, the momentum may have been broken. They went for it. They oddly called an outside play. They didn't get it. And that may have turned the corner and the momentum for the Pats. 1.50, the clock is moving here in Green Bay. The Packers 27, the Patriots 14. Harold Jackson splits wide to the right. Stanley Morgan. The wide receiver to the left. Calhoun gets the call, and he gets inside the 40. Gain of a yard, a yard and a half. Very little. Second and long. Mike Douglas, Gary Weaver, in on the stop for Green Bay. Jim Gano, Mike Douglas, Rich Wingo, Gary Weaver. The four linebackers in Green Bay's 3-4 that they've had to adopt tonight because of the injuries to their down linemen. They're in it right now. Barber, Johnson, Barzaluskas are the down men. Second, a long eight. Grogan. Morgan. Oh. And Morgan is hit by Johnny Gray. Never had possession. Incomplete. Look at them. Why are they high? <laughs> that Green Bay secondary is doing a job tonight between Gray and 
Luke in particular. They certainly seem to be fond of one another, too. I like that. This is a toughie, man. Morgan comes down, and he's got his eye on that oh. ball. That was a heck of a shot in there by Johnny Gray, number 24. He also had Harold Jackson on a similar route to the other side. Harold was also equally as open as was Morgan. There was a time when that kind of Green Bay secondary hitting was commonplace as you look at Johnny Gray. 24 was Willie Wood, 21 was Bobby G, to 26 was Herb Addison, and 49 was Tommy Brown. Third down, long eight. Out goes Morgan, in comes Don Westbrook, offensively for New England. Brogan slips. He has a lot of room, but he knows it's not enough, and he throws for Francis incomplete. He went over the line of scrimmage, too, I think. Flag is down. I think they're going to call him over the line of scrimmage, Frank. I'm not he sure. very close. Francis was open uh, the whole time. It's difficult. All time. When a quarterback makes that, tucks the ball down and thinks he's going to run, his mind kind of shifts off of that pattern. Yep, that's what it was. Lost the line of scrimmage, lost it down. They really made some... Uh, Sloppy mistakes. They tonight. did. They failed to capitalize. They're having quarterback problems. Francis lined up that time as a wide receiver. And he was free all the way, as you said. But Don. Particularly in the latter part of that route. Uh, they had him early, but he kept moving. And when uh, Grogan pulled it down to run, you see from there on, there's nobody else really nobody right there. there. Yeah. Costly penalty. Loss of down and the penalty moves the ball back to the 49-yard line. It's fourth down. Eddie Hare comes in, his second punt of the night. And he is kicking into a pretty good win, Frank. That's yes, he is. Right in his face. Steve Odom. There he is, number 84, lined up at Green Bay's 15. <laughs> Hare has changed his stance from when we, or his number of steps that he takes on his punts. Well, he took a three-stepper that time, and it's oh. off the side of his foot. Kicked it side. He's been getting one of those a game, and it's really been affecting his average in Green Bay. He's going to have position at their own 27-yard line. It's going to affect his job security if he keeps on doing it. <laughs> Very sloppy play by the New England Patriots. Well, I'd say the pack dodged a silver bullet there, didn't they? 42 seconds remaining in the third quarter. New England tonight coming in with a 3-1 mark. Miami is ahead of them in the Eastern Division of the AFC. Miami is 4-1. and one. We'll see them next Monday night against Oakland. First and 10, Green Bay. Whitehurst, Hoffman. It's pretty cool back there, Don. I'll tell you, he had a crowd around him. Yeah, he's really kind of uh, leveled it out. It seems like as the game's gone on, I felt he was a little bit nervous in the opening stages of the game. He seems to be, that's Thompson, you see, bringing a play in from the sideline. So I guess they do vary how they get that play in there. I like the fact they threw on first down, not sitting on anything. 12 seconds left in the quarter. Yep, second and five. Middleton, open field, good oh, move. Good move. Cardell Middleton close to midfield of the 49-yard line. First down, Green Bay. Finally saved there by Ray Claiborne. And Cardell Middleton put some fine moves on some grasping New England Patriots. That's Timmy Fox. They came up to get him. You'll see it now. Big hole in there. I think they expected a play there with the outside. The box missed it. And then that happens at the end of the third quarter. Green Bay over New England 27-14. will return for the fourth quarter in just a moment. Thursday, Dietrich pulls the mugging detail. I'm just a girl who can't say no. Barney Miller. Then the real bird gets caught in the lion's den while his alien double gets all he can. I'm absolutely exhausted. So, and on 2020, a visit with old blue eyes himself. Thursday. Good evening on TV11's Late News tonight. We'll go live to the Green Bay Packer locker room to get Bart Starr's comments on the game. Join us for all of the news, weather, and sports about 11.30 tonight. If you're looking for value... Shopko's got great values on clothes. Save 25% on ladies' proportion slacks. They come in seven beautiful colors, and they're wear dated for one year by Monsanto. Save 25% on men's double pre-shrunk flannel shirts in many plaids and colors. And men's no-fault regular or pre-washed Wrangler jeans are 25% off at Shopko. Sale ends Sunday. We're open till midnight through Friday. Say hello to a good life at Shopko. Does it make sense for light beers with less calories to cost more than popular priced beers?
Blatt's doesn't think so. So Blatt's, the beer that challenged the Nationals, introduces new Blatt's light beer with one-third less calories than our regular beer at regular Blatt's prices. Come on, enjoy all the quality and taste you expect from Blatt's in a light beer that's fully aged with real beer flavor. New Blatt's light beer. Why pay more for less? Please the crowd, 6.30 weekdays on TV 11. Well, yes, yes, I don't know who he is or where it came from, but I know who he's pulling for. He's been drinking the wrong juice. The Jolly Green somebody. There's one in every crowd. We begin the fourth quarter. It's been a Packers football game. What a show the youngsters have put on. They have a first and ten. The ball at their own 49-yard line. Robert Kimball, a rookie from Oklahoma, is a wide receiver now for Green Bay, number 85, and this is Middleton. Made a nifty run close to midfield at the huh. end of the third quarter. This the time he picks up a yard and a half, and we suck an eight. The move he put on Jimmy Fox, number 48, was a thing of beauty. He yeah. left Fox groping for air. Thing of beauty, a joy forever. They didn't line up again. Second down and nine, and here we go. Well, yes, Hoffman, the tight end, has a Green Bay first down inside the 40 at the 37, hit by Sam Hunt. That was kind of an unusual look from those linebackers. It seemed they dropped too deep. Kaufman got there in front of them, but nobody made a move up there. The reason, by the way, that they're not lining up when you see them do that is to not let New England get its fit back in. Two linebackers uh, missing the from the lining up. Uh, regular defensive unit of New England, Mike Hawkins and Steve Nelson. Both were injured. First and ten. Whiter is trying to get the screen to Kaufman, the tight end. He does. Oh, and Kaufman is hit by Mike Haynes. A wicked shot, but he still staggers forward for an extra yard. Oh, Haynes, my this has been a rough, tough game. Kaufman was yelling at Haynes right there, but it was a clean, hard hit. My gosh, Kaufman weighs 228 pounds. Mike Haynes weighs 195. And this was nobody but just Kaufman and Haynes. Oh, that's an all-pro cornerback. Here he is. The ball pops out, but it goes out of bounds. So it's still Green Bay's ball, second down in a long eight. And it could have been a big gainer, but for Mike Haynes, second and eight. Curdell Middleton. Oh, Look he's at that kid. Nifty moves, and he... Turns a loss into a big gainer, close to a first down, down to the 28-yard line. Oh, they really should have had him. Lunsford and Schultz both were five yards deep. Somehow he eluded them and picked up a big gain. You, and you never, yeah, you can never get practice too much, Chester. Especially when you aim for the left upright. Just keep on <laughs> kicking that ball. Ron Earhart. Tell me where the troops have gone tonight. Third and one, maybe less than one. In the old days, you could plan on Bart Starr. Play action, going for six in this situation. This is Barty Smith. He might have on second effort got the first down. I believe he did. We'll be very close. There he is. I'll never forget. From today. One of the things that helped Bart call that play was to hand it off to Jim Taylor. As Whitehurst handed it off to Smith that time. When you've got to stop both of them, it opens up that passing a heck of a lot more. And right now for measurement. There's really nothing magic. On third and two, you go off right tackle. And you pick up a first down. I didn't have to tell you. Again, 12 o'clock Eastern Time. Pope John Paul addressing the UN. And ABC News will be there as they have been throughout his tour through Ireland. And of course today in Boston. And of course he'll be in New York tomorrow. Addressing the UN at noon. And you'll see it on ABC. First and ten, Green Bay. Ball at the 27-yard line. Curdell Middleton. Uh -huh. Another nifty little move. And Middleton in the arms of... Doug Bedoin goes down, but he's inside the 25 at the 24. His total yardage for the night may not be overwhelming, but it has been a positively spectacular performance. 
There it is, only 64 yards, but key yardage, extra yardage, tremendous effort by that man. She said earlier, Howard, it's so true. He gets in trouble and gets out of it as much as any back you'll ever see. He always is running in traffic, but he always gets the extra two or three yards. Now he goes in motion. Whitehurst goes to the tight end. Paul Crossman, and he struggles forward, trying to get to the first down. He doesn't. Moves to about the 21, where it'll be third down. Call it four. Rod showed in on the stop. They told me he couldn't throw the big bomb, and he lacked leadership quality. But I found out about Rod Starr. That's from Run to Daylight. Man is a leader. They've started to boo him, some of the fans around here. But forget it. He won't crack. Third and four. Andre Thompson split to the left. Top of your screen, James Lofton. He's the dangerous receiver for Green Bay. Marty Smith tries to struggle to the first down. He doesn't get there. He's at the 20 yard line. It'll be fourth down. Chester, Chester. Chester, Chester. All right. It's going to be kind of a shaky one for Chester because we've mentioned a couple of times tonight he is kicking right into the wind. It's kicked, it's almost straight into it, but I think now we've got a little crosswind. So, Chester, use your best hook shot, fella. Coming into tonight, two of three on the year, a 28 yarder, a 38 yarder. At Hillsdale College, he set up an AIA record with a 62 yard field goal, so he's got a lot of foot. 38 yard attempt. Ah, they call timeout, well, they think about it. Green. Well, it is New England. It's called timeout. And we have 11 08 remaining in this football game. Chester Markle will have some time to think about it, and we'll be returning in a moment. Now, the best zenith ever, System 3, is even better. Even better. The sharpest zenith picture ever. Sharpest picture. An all modular chassis designed to be the most reliable zenith ever. Most reliable. And now, Better sound, four speakers, audio jacks, even an audio control center. Better sound, Zenith, System 3, System 3, now even better. There's a notion afoot that the boxier a car is, the more sense it makes. Now, it seems like Buick and a whole lot of Regal owners disagree. Instead of making the Regal look like a European jogging shoe, they made it crisp and clean. Instead of making it austere, they made it luxurious. And instead of underpowering it, they give it an efficient V6 engine. Buick Regal. Proof that intelligence doesn't always come in a box. Regal. When a car looks this good, it's nice to know it is this good. A look at the knockout victories last party by Sugar Ray Leonard and WBC heavyweight champion Larry Holmes Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports. We're back in Green Bay, fourth down for the Packers, leading 27-14. Chester Markle is on the field. He's had time to think about a 38-yard attempt. The holder is David Beverly, the punter. Well within Markle's range. Keep in mind, there is a gusting wind. Fake, Beverly. Oh. oh. Tried to go back to Markle. Incomplete. I'll tell you, Bot's trying everything. Yeah. You know, we were sitting here in that timeout saying that. Well, anyway, yeah, we should have said it on the air. Markle says, right? Was I open? He was open. Who did that? The Denver Broncos did it against Oakland. Jim Turner scoring. <laughs> well, they did have it covered over on the right side pretty well. <laughs> and uh, he just threw one of those wobblers. And Frank, the, look at Markle, his disgust with the pet. Frank, the Denver Broncos did it against the Rams on our Thursday night gamer, and they threw to Jim Turner, which was the wrong man to throw to. On first and ten, Grogan. Fires Cunningham. And Cunningham has a New England first down out close to the 34-yard line. But Grogan drifted way back, had a lot of time. Cunningham laid on a block and then just drifted into the pattern. He was there. But you still have to figure that New England can come back because they're so explosive. They've got so much talent. And but passing, they have the wind in this quarter. The erraticisms of Grogan have held them back. He gives you something, and then he takes it away. 
And bends, but he doesn't quit. <laughs> Oh, what a catch oh, by Don Westbrook. Oh. Don Westbrook. Don Westbrook in there for Stanley Morgan, who was hit rather hard a while ago, came out of the lineup. Let's look at it again. This is a super catch. Oh, you're going to see the ball come on the other side of McCoy. That's right. And he didn't even call Talk it. Talk about the... reflex. Wow. A little bit behind the receiver, I'd say, and what an adjustment, Westbrook. 23-yard pickup. That's Westbrook's second reception of the year. His first one was a 14-yard touchdown. First down, the ball at the 43-yard line of Green Bay. Looks like he's trying to audible something in there. Let's see if it works. Nope. Calhoun. Line of scrimmage. Give him a half a yard, maybe a yard. Gary Weaver popped him. I bet old Earl Edwards is beginning to feel uh, some of those first... This is his first game with him, isn't he? He just joined the team. He's got to be a little bit, well, I guess, uh, out of sync out there. Hasn't quite got it together, but he's playing a good ball game. Now they're going to take him out and give him a rest. And Green Bay, with Edwards coming out, will slide into the 3-4. Jim Gino, linebacker, comes in. Second down, a long nine. Down, look out. Cunningham dropped oh. the ball. Flag down at the line of scrimmage. Rogan really found it. I thought you saw a clear holding penalty against the Pats. If it's true, again, the critical mistake. Charlie Johnson, rookie from Maryland, really pounded Rogan. No, nope. outside. Well, they're doing a remarkably good job defensing uh, New England, I'd say. They're a powerhouse team, one of the top teams in football, maybe the top team in the AFC in total yardage. What do we have? Offside, offense, number 81, oh. Refuse. third down. That's what keeps him from being all-world. He said he was nearly all-world. Sometimes he goes offside. Ray Jarvis comes in, number 87. He was acquired when Carlos Pennywell hurt his ankle. He's been around a little bit. Don, nobody's worked with Ray Berry, now New England's coach up at Detroit. He wears number 87. He's in there on a passing down, third down and nine. Rogan, Cunningham, another flag is down. Cunningham short of the first down. Holding this time, and it's yep. going to go against New England. Fritz Wingo was all over Cunningham. He was short of the first down. Do you think they'll take that penalty, or do you think they'll take the fourth down right there? This will be an interesting decision. What would you do? I think I would uh, not take the penalty and give him fourth down and let him try that field goal from right there. Field goal from out there? Forget well, it. Well, okay, let him try Wind the or no win. Well, don't give him any more downs then. They're out of Smith's range. Well, they're going to take him back, and I think they're doing the right thing if they accept the penalty. You're not saying that because you feel that's what they're going to do. You see them backing up like that, are you? <laughs> I think they're doing the right thing. Put them back in their own territory. Yeah, give him another down to throw. Well, they've shown no capacity other than to make the big mistake. These Patriots have named themselves the big team. Holding offense number 62. Oh, Third down. Dwight Wheeler, his second call of the night. Third down now, 20. Patriots 47 yard line. Ray Jarvis stays in there, split out to the left. Russ Francis, the tight end, opens up wide, split to the right, and in the slot is Earl Jackson. Safety blitz picked up. Brogan reads it. Goes to Jarvis. He drops the ball. I think that's going to be a fumble. I think you're right. Look out, referee. No, well, he's saying, saying no. no. Incomplete, but it looked like Jarvis had it. It did to me, too. Dead to these people here in Green Bay. Well, they look at it a little differently, but it definitely looked like possession. Johnny Gray knows it was possession. Ray Jarvis got down. Yeah, and he took a couple of steps. Mike McCoy pounded the ball loose. Ruled incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Eddie Hare in the punt. 
His last punt, 21 yards. This is Steve Odom at his own 15-yard line. End over end. Odom will have a lot of time to look it over. Oh, no. Oh, oh he coughs it up. And Green Bay, Green Bay is there. That, I well, believe it's Tim Colbert. That's down well, the, there. No. And he's saying New England has it. Colbert made a go for it. I'll tell you, that guy right there may have made the biggest play so far tonight, Jim Colbert. I don't know what this guy's doing. Sometimes he's letting it get away from him. But Colbert was alert. 8.58 remaining in the game, and we'll be back in a moment. You survey where the land is wild and unforgiving. A land of hard, desolate beauty few men have seen, filling in the empty places on maps that until now have been almost unknown. But when the sun retreats from the sky, you set your sights for Miller time. Time to head for the best-tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life, America's quality beer since 1855. If you got the time, we've got the beer. Miller, tastes too good to hurry through. When it's time to relax, we've got the beer. Miller Beer. Miller Beer. On NCAA College Football, one of the biggest rivalries, the Michigan Wolverines battle the Spartans of Michigan State Saturday on ABC. The little ribbons on the goalpost. Give you an idea of the breeze that is gusting here against the Green Bay Packers. They have the ball at their two-yard line. 8.58 remaining in the game. They lead the Patriots 27-14. But they know they're in against an explosive ball club in New England. Whitehurst. Back to pass. Gets rid of it in the direction of Turdell Middleton. He was covered well by Mike Haynes. Surprise you by passing, Dunn? Well, yeah, a little bit, but not, not as much as it did New England. They didn't have anybody open. It's uh, it's not an uncommon play down there, but what they've done, they took a, put a lot of... They says, okay, we're going to lay it all here on the first down. They were playing on hitting this thing. Now they got to make 10 yards and two downs. Now they're going to be putting into the wind. Here comes Barty, rumbling up the middle. Second and 10. Barty Smith. Turns a corner and he gets a oh, oh, what a big, big, big play. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Nothing fancy. I wouldn't have thought he would have picked up anything. Looks like Barty Smith may be a little bit hurt. Well, he's shaking up. I don't think he's hurt. Gets the early. first down. I said early in the game as you look at Vaughn Scott that Smith achieved respectability last year and looks to be on his way to having a very fine year this year. Good, good block by Kaufman there. The tight end that's out there holding off the linebacker, and that's a nice move by old Tim Fox. Caught it again from old Barty Smith. Barty Smith running right over Tim Fox. He also got a fine block from Middleton. And the Packers get out from the shadow of their own goalpost. The ball at the 14, first and 10. Here's Middleton, another big hole. And Middleton, again a three. It'll be second and seven. Again, New England having a tough time tonight. They have lost again. Steve Nelson and Mike Hawkins, two linebacking regulars. Julius Adams, who's a long-term good one. But Bont was saying today, we've simply got to have a super effort against this team. Everything's got to go for us. And it has been a super effort with 7.30 to play and counting down. Colbert stays in, number 31, for Barty Smith. This is Colbert. No, Middleton, rather. Gets to the 20-yard line. Again, of a couple, it'll be third down and a long three. Tony McGee in on the stop. Valuable seconds ticking away for the New England Patriots. <coughs> New England next week will be home of Foxborough for Detroit. Green Bay will be in Atlanta for Sunday games. Third and a long three. Whitehurst, a 
under pressure by Julius Adams. Unloads it in the direction of Middleton. And it'll be fourth down. And Green Bay will be punting into a strong win. David Beverly, who we have discovered is not all that good a passer, comes in to do the punting. <laughs> Stanley Morgan for New England. Calculates the win. He moves up to New England's 45-yard line. So New England's going to have good field position. Beverly off the side of his foot. Getting a good Green Bay bounce, considering and New England's going to have the ball in Green Bay territory at the 48. 6.33 remaining, and they are down 27 to 14. We'll be back in a moment. Well, you've just sold me on a great typewriter, but I work with numbers. The Lanier No Problem typewriter does more than just type. Financial typing, no problem. It even adds and subtracts. I do our personnel list. Will it help there? No problem. It sorts alphabetically and numerically and gets your work back faster. The Lanier No Problem Electronic Typewriter. It does more than just type. For those parents who realize that $500 isn't too much to spend to expand their child's world, Radio Shack has the perfect gift. The TRS-80 computer, the most significant investment a parent can make. Programs for your child's education or your business, finance, and home use. Let your children discover tomorrow's technology today. The TRS-80, the biggest name in little computers. Only at Radio Shack. A Tandy company. We found Bob Uecker. <laughs> Bob Live in the UL and in Green Bay. First and 10, New England. 6.33 remaining in the game. They have the ball at Green Bay's 48-yard line. They have the weapons. They have just not been able to load them and fire them. Yeah, and Drogan in trouble gets out of it. Hangs one up happened. down towards Earl Jackson, who wisely knocks it away from the defender. He really did. Well, Green Bay is claiming offensive interference, but it's not going to hold. I have seen very few people get it all back in one play. These guys move that ball well. They're trying to go deep. They've got that win in there. Let's get a shot of Wingo. He's coming back. He's reading this thing. He's going to finally track Grogan down. He says, I'm tired of this stuff. Hold it, fella. <laughs> right under that old uh, armpit, right under the ribs. That's the name, as we said, to remember. Wingo. He moves it around well. He's 6'1", but he goes 230 pounds, and he's quick. So I would tell Grogan, I'd throw to Russ Francis every play. Almost kept his feet. He gets inside the 15 with the 14. Stanley Morgan. Like I said, if I were Grogan, I'd throw to Stanley Morgan. I think we have play. another cramp. He really did come in there. The ball was well thrown. Stanley Morgan's not running anything fancy, kind of a little split route. You see, he come just bend in right in the middle. The ball was right on the money, and he almost kept his feet. Would have scored easily. Morgan comes off. He grabbed his leg. It could be. Uh, a cramped leg. Again, the turf is a little soft, and that's when you get a lot of cramps. Huh? He takes Look. off. You can see him kind of limping right there. I'll tell you, that's some guts. That's right. You ever had a cramp in your calf? You know what it feels like. I never had a muscle in my calf. But I didn't want to bring it up. Ray Jarvis comes in. He was activated recently, as I mentioned a moment ago, when Carlos Pennywell hurt his ankle. That's right. He's out. Jackson's been working against a full groin for a long time. You remember Jarvis, Don, Scotland, Atlanta, then Buffalo. Detroit picked him up and suddenly led the conference in receptions with Detroit. Now signed and activated here under the circumstances of the Pennywell injury and uh, to a degree the Jackson injury. He's at the top of your screen, number 87. In the slot is Russ Francis, where he can be deadly. Jackson's put to the right. Now Francis in motion. Goes to Francis, off his fingertips. Uh, and almost collected by Harold Jackson. 
It'll be third and ten. It's a bad time to drop one. He had Johnny Gray, number 24, with him all the time. We saw him line up at the start of that play in the slot. He goes in motion, trying to come back down and run a little out pattern. Here he goes in motion. And what you probably don't see is you'll see Johnny Gray following along, takes that quick cut. They're trying to get him a good first down and trying to get the ball to Francis down there. A very catchable ball. Right to him. Yep. Jarvis is left along with Harold Jackson and Russ Francis splits to the right. And he'll draw a double coverage there. Brogan. And Brogan manages to get the ball off close to Calhoun. Robert Barber had Brogan in a bear hug and under the new rule, we thought we would hear a whistle early on that because he was definitely in the grasp of a defender. You got Barber coming in from that right side. He's got him, and here comes Big Barzo, number 75, and Grogan did get it off. You're right, Link. That's That was uh, getting rid of the thing in a hurry, but I'm surprised they didn't blow it dead back there. Under the circumstances, a good throw. Mm -hmm. Third and ten. In perspective, still another New England opportunity that may be by the boards. It's happened throughout the game. Report on Morgan and Charlie Horse. He may return, he may not. Got a flag. He did. There he is. He draws a flag. Gary Weaver was back there defensively for Green Bay. They call it old Morgan against Morgan. Five twenty-six left. All right. Now they got to go on fourth down down here. What's the field goal going to do? What do you think? I don't know, but I see a now disheveled coach. A disheveled coach. I don't think he believes what's happened tonight. Penalty being marked off against the New England Patriots. Interference, offense, number 86, third down. Let's watch Morgan. He, he's in against Estes Hood. Well, yeah, that's very, very close down there. Uh, yeah. Slow dancing. Down remains the same. It'll be third down and 20. Ball at the 23-yard line. Rest is wide to the left. Westbrook's in there now. Westbrook, 83, split to the right. Oh, good. Good defensive play in the end zone. I believe it was Johnny Gray again. I think Mike Douglas knocked it down by number 53. He was back in there, too. Mike Douglas and Johnny Gray both back there defending against Russ Francis. Trying to go to their big gun, Francis. Had a lot of people back there. You see, didn't have very much of a rush. They got a lot of green paint. That's Douglas, 53. He was pretty well covered anyway. Now watch what's done here. Watch what happens to Francis. Douglas hits the ball, and Francis gets hit by another defender. And, and down he went. And, and we it are, brings up fourth down. We are getting very close. And great. New England is going to go on fourth. Field goal would not help. 519 remaining in the game. Jackson goes out to the left. He lines up with Mike McCoy. Now he comes in motion. Brogan is oh. sacked. Oh my God. The 34 yard line. What a Jim fight. Gino was in there, number 51. And so was Wingo, number 50. Uh, Rich Wingo. Gino. They shot everyone but Bart Starr. And we may be getting a Meredith song. Any yeah. moment. Burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the pain grew higher. How about that? I changed it on. <laughs> and Green Bay gets the football at their own 33 yard line. Rogan's trying to figure it out. Gato is really playing tonight because Green Bay has been in trouble with down linemen. He's been the fourth linebacker in Green Bay's improvised 3 4 defense. 15 remaining in the game. Colbert in motion. Handoff. Middleton. Middleton. 
over the 35 to the 37. The flag is down at the line of scrimmage. Okay, Mr. Wingo. We know you now. <laughs> penalty against Green Bay. Well, that's an unhappy young man. His statistics are misleading. Five sacks tonight. Green Bay came into this game with six in the previous four games. Here's the call. Motion. Offense. Number 31. First down. Jim Culbreth in there as a setback for Green Bay. Illegally in motion. Before the injury to Ezra Johnson, the key to Bob Starr's defense had been the pass rush featuring Johnson and Butler. But they've gotten it from so many tonight. First down, 15. Middleton piled up the 30-yard line, but precious seconds ticking away for New England. The play of Luke in gray. The play of that kid, Barber. It's been a team effort. It really has. As and I said, fun to watch. A lot of new heroes. Rich Wingo. Okay, we expected this kind of game when we got here in Green Bay. You did? I said we did not. On oh. paper, it didn't look like that it would be very close. As it looked a like a classic mismatch. Second down, 13. The ball at the 30-yard line of Green Bay. <laughs> Reverse. Thompson, the wide receiver. He goes down back at the 23. <laughs> well, at least they chewed up some of the clock with that slowly developing double reverse. Now you get the feeling it's something they worked on all week and just wanted to get it in, you know. Next week, a tremendous week for ABC Sports. Next Monday night, it'll be Miami against Oakland. And then on Tuesday, the start of the World Series. And the World Series continues on Wednesday and Friday. And then on Saturday in the college football. And then, if necessary, it continues on Sunday and then Monday night football. Third down, 20. And off Culbert. He slithers out to the 25-yard line. Fourth down, Green Bay will kick against the wind. A lot of sports. 3.35, the clock is moving along at the highest level. There's Carl Boisolaskis. They didn't know whether Carl would be able to go tonight either. He's played himself a terrific game. He's become just a different ball player from what he was after his great rookie year with the Jets. This is David Beverly. Stanley Morgan is lined up for New England. That is 43. Okay, he was only back about seven or eight yards. He hurried the kick. Goes out of bounds. New England will have the football at the 47-yard line. They're not out of it yet. Always being conservative. The 1979 <laughs> Packers. Why? Go ask Bart Starr. They were tonight. Because he was anything but conservative tonight. New England has three minutes and two seconds. They're down 27-14. They have two timeouts. Star. He has to be proud of a lot of scrappy youngsters tonight. Logan on first down. Sam Cunningham turns up field, battles for a first down. With the 43-yard line, Tim Gano defensively for Green Bay. And down the 245 on the clock now. And still counting. Grogan knows they need a big one. They have to hit from, they're going to have to hit from out here somewhere if they're going to pull this out. And they've been unable to do so all night. Grogan again, chased out of the pocket. That's up for grabs. Hangs it up for Francis and almost picked off by Johnny Gray. How do you Grogan like that? Grogan has really found it. Grogan got hurt, may have hurt his shoulders, as a matter of fact, as he was hit by Charlie Johnson. And uh, I saw him grab his shoulder first. He is down and is evidently in a great deal of pain. This has been a terribly costly evening for the Patriots. Hawkins out. Steve Nelson. Andy Johnson out. Now Grogan. Watch 
the bottom of your screen, you'll see Grogan get hit. Here on the replay. He never did set in that pocket. Of course, he's got some protection there. He starts his roll, starts his move out. You see Charlie Johnson, 99, slide his block over. He's got a zero in there on Grogan. He's up in the air, and I believe what we didn't see was that both of them fell on his right shoulder. Tom Owen comes in. Oh, did great time, Johnny man. Gray almost picked it off. He timed it perfectly. He's had a super game, Johnny Gray. Just super. The free agent from Fullerton, California. Oh, and of course, came to the Patriots with four draft picks in exchange for Jim Plunkett to San Francisco. Hasn't seen that much action behind Grogan. Oh, yeah. Oh, and Green Bay oh, yeah. turned it over and picked off uh -huh. by Mike Douglas. But again, great pressure. And look at... Oh, don't no, Bobby Douglas. <laughs> You'll want to see a fired-up team. Those kids in the green jerseys have been that way all night from the very beginning. Heavy underdogs coming into this game. I've never seen a more confident group of men than the Patriots were. We all stayed at the same hotel. And instead, here at the end of the game, it's the pack playing like they are back. Full team effort. Steve Luke on a safety blitz along with Mike Butler. Pop Tom Owen just as he tried to deliver the ball and Mike Douglas came up with it. Well, I'm going to have a hard time giving. They should give the game ball to both Johnny Gray and Steve Luke. They threw everything out of brought all the linebackers in there, and you call it right, Frank. It was Steve Luke popped up into the air, and look at Douglas go. He's going to look at this film several times, and here it was. I could have scored. Stay on your oh, feet. Oh, oh son, son. Heading for the two-minute warning. Colbert gets the call, turns the corner, line of scrimmage. Bang, that's it. Hit there by Steve King. And there it is, two-minute warning. Green Bay in control of this football game. Leading 27-14. We'll be back in a moment. Buick proudly announces some very fine cars and some very good thinking. This is the 1980 Century Limited sedan. My sister thinks it's very sophisticated. My dad thinks it's economical. My mother thinks it's roomy. I think I'm lucky to have it is the limited edition Regal Somerset. I think it's elegant proof that a truly sensible car doesn't have to be boring. 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 This is the Buick Riviera, an automobile so incredible that people who could seriously think about buying almost any car in the world are driving Rivieras. This is the Buick Skyline. It has a surprising amount of room and comfort and really good economy and front wheel drive. I think it just might be the perfect car for me. Or you. Do you think that owning a 1980 Buick might be a good idea? Good thinking. Green Bay came into tonight's game with six sacks in the previous four games. They've had five tonight. And they just forced another turnover by hitting Tom Owen as he was trying to release the ball. So the non-existent pass rush has... Returned against the New England Patriots. And indeed, they have sacked Rogan tonight. <laughs> well, second, they were right. Second and 11. Lofton and Look Wilson. out, look out. Whitehurst gets it off. With and this is Eric Torkelson. Oh. Oh. Hey, Whitehurst did a heck of a job under Didn't pressure that time. There was nobody blocking. Turned around and just kept moving back and flipped a little screen out. Totally kept his poise. And there is the quiet leader. And they'll have a different view of him for a week at least after tonight. Some of the heat going off Bart Star. Eric Torkelson from University of Connecticut takes it inside the five-yard line. First and goal, Green Bay. He was reading the plays again off the cuff. Don Matty, come back. Bootleg, Whitehurst will have to get rid of it, and he does. Oh, they're going to call him. They're going to call him for throwing it away. Steve King in there, ran it all the way, forced Whitehurst through the sidelines. He threw it away, and they picked it up. Minute, four seconds left. Got another song? 
Now Frank's got some words. Uh, give me some background. Our executive producer, of course, ABC Sports is Ruin Arledge. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, produced by Dennis Lewin, directed by Chip Forty. Our technical director, Bill Morris, who has had the courage, the temerity, if you will, to work 10 years with Chester Forty. Our associate director, Bob Lanning, technical manager, Vern Curry. The unit manager is Bob Covelli. Great group we've been traveling with for these many years we can use some beautiful pictures and the excitement of a team that came on to the field unimpressed with stats standings and battled the New England Patriots to a standstill and then took it away from them second down 14 wham Carkelson just hold on to the football is what they're saying in that huddle well, it's a topsy-turvy league this year. Yesterday's flow of events, three of the unbeatens going down. This upset tonight. Get that camera. Mark Starr will have the happiness that is eluded him thus far as a head coach of the Packers. We'll be back in a moment. The world won't stop when you want to photograph it, but the Olympus OM-10 can stop the world. The OM-10 is fully automatic. This Olympus tells you when you can shoot and when you can't. You change lenses in seconds with the OM-10. Or put on a winder and lock in the action at three frames per second. The Olympus OM-10 even has a self-timer, so you can get in the action instead of just watching it. With Olympus OM-10, great shots automatically. It takes time for a young family to provide the dollars they need for their financial protection. But through life insurance, a New York Life agent can instantly assure you those dollars. It takes a lifetime to build the financial security my family needs. With New York Life Insurance, I can get that protection now. To develop protection takes time, but New York Life gives me the equivalent of years of time. For all of your life. But go forth. Yeah, that's a good one to start off with. Go forth is right, and they have done that tonight, haven't they? Well, left guard of the backers of the 57 out of Oklahoma State. Young team. They're not the famous names in the NFL as of yet. They made their mark tonight. No. They're not all there. Corning, Taylor, Kramer, and McGee, and the late Henry Jordan. Greg, they're not like them, but for tonight at least, the Green Bay pride of performance that Mr. Lombardi talked about evidenced itself. The days are here again. And <laughs> all our eyes are clear. Hello, middle Happy days are here again. Close to the five yard line. All right. New England can't stop it. They have one time now. If they choose to do so. Oh, Listen to the they fans now. now. They're waving those pump pumps now. Verdell Middleton is coming out and he's getting an ovation. He deserves it. Just he's holding his left arm, however. Tremendous, tremendous effort. You talk about a guy playing hurt. He did it tonight. Those will be the standings in the AFC East. And again, kudos to Chuck Knox. What a job he's doing with Buffalo. And look how tight the thing is. There's the NFC Central. Tampa Bay, the only unbeaten team in the National Football League. And next Monday night, resurgent Oakland, which shredded Denver 27-3, will play host to the Miami Dolphins. That's an old rivalry. I think that will really be a good football game. I love, I love to watch the snake play, and I always enjoy the Miami team, so we got a good one going next Monday. They have played some of the greatest games I have ever seen, including the waffle pass from Stabler to Clarence Davis. Yeah. Do you remember that one? Which one? The yeah. game when yeah. Stabler oh, yeah. hit yeah. Clarence Davis, and incredibly, they stole the victory in the title from Miami. We're going to do the best we can without you next week. You call them like you see them over in that baseball world, and we'll be kicking off the new Cooper, Fran, and Ollie show in Oakland. Uh -huh. Fourth down, Green Bay. New England used their final timeout. 
the clock will stop with 22 seconds. That was Torkelson again in the arms of Tim Fox. It's over now. It's over. It's time to call it a day. Quickly, who do you like? California or Baltimore? Cincinnati or Pittsburgh? You talking to me or you talking to Frank? I'm talking to you. Well, I, I'm waiting for the Dodgers to make a last-minute surge. Is it too late for them? It's a little late for them, but Tommy Lasorda will be back. Who do you like, Howard? There it is, the World Series. The 1979 World Series beginning Tuesday, October 9th, live, 8 o'clock Eastern Time here on ABC. Do you like Baltimore, Howard? Howard, Baltimore, California. I think that Baltimore is the best team in baseball. That's where it's belong in Baltimore. Cincinnati, Pittsburgh. That's tough. I think that's even Steven. I think Cincinnati has a slight pitching edge, but that Pittsburgh team is a together team. They smack of the 1960 team in their team balance, and they've got more power than they had in 60 when they beat the Yanks in seven games. You gotta ask. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame you, Bart. You haven't had easy going. Rogan, incomplete. That's a man with style and class. It'll be second and ten for New England. There are 17 seconds on the clock. New England cannot stop it. They have no more timeouts. Jarvis out of bounds. Kills the clock at 21 yard line and 10 seconds on the clock. I don't know what's going to happen, though, between Jim Palmer and Earl Weaver, Frank. Jim says pitch Flanagan. Don't pitch me. What, for the opener? Yeah. Why, why does he feel that way? Says his arm isn't right. Yeah. Pretty good pitcher. He's a certain Hall of Famer. You bet. First down, New England. off by Estes Hood. This football game is over. So it ended the way it was all night. With Green Bay opportunistically five interceptions of New England by Green Bay. Mark Starr looking for Ron Earhart. A couple of classy gentlemen there. Well, Mark's really got to be happy, hasn't he? I think the town's happy. run through that tunnel many times. Final score, Green Bay, 27, New England, 14. Be sure to join us next week for ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. The Miami Dolphins against the Oakland Raiders from the Oakland Alameda County Stadium in Oakland, California. Travel arrangements made through and a promotion will be paid by United Airlines. More people fly United to Hawaii than any other airline. This has been a presentation of the leader ABC Sports, bringing you exclusive coverage when the world comes to America this February for the 1980 Winter Olympics. Watch ABC News for complete coverage of Pope John Paul II's visit to America. His address to the UN tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern. An ABC News special report Tuesday late night and coverage of his speech from Battery Park, New York, Wednesday. Stay with ABC News for complete coverage of the Pope in America. Wisconsin leads the nation. We're live from Upset City. We'll have the news. We'll have the weather, and most of all, we'll have the sports in just a moment.